Oh, I'm so sorry to say the weekend is over, but Assassin's Creed 3, baby, is here. Welcome back here with your boy Cam from the wet and rainy Vancouver, Canada. How y'all doing, huh? Hope you had a great weekend with a new Assassin, new time frame. Thank you, Ezio, for your service. It's time for you to ride off into the sunset, and he did at the end of <clears throat> Assassin's Creed Revelations. All right. Okay. So the last time I've, I was on this game, guys, this game came out in 2012, okay? I, I finished 76% of the game. June 3rd of 2013, or March 6th, whichever you prefer. 2013, so 10 years ago. It has been basically 10 years, almost 10 years since I've played this game, guys. So this is going to be a trip. Jacob Richardson, this is gonna be a trip. Used All right. to be when people talked about the end of the world, we locked them up or laughed them off. Sometimes both, but we never took them seriously. Maybe we should have. Yeah. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Better to start at the beginning with the abduction of Desmond Miles, right. my son. This boy had no ambition, no direction, no plans for the future. What he did have was a heritage one he chose to deny. Mm. It we learned about this last game. Life. He was captured and imprisoned. Those who took him believed he could help them find something. The apple. One of several artifacts we call pieces of Eden. Bits of ancient technology scattered across the globe. Right. Some hidden, some found. All of them dangerous. Most are held by a single group. The same group that now had Desmond. Right. You know them as Abstergo Industries. <laughs> we know them as the Templars. As the enemy. We've okay. been fighting them for thousands of years. Even longer if you believe the stories of their origins. Aha. I do. Can't wait to play that game. After all, I've seen the truth. That's the beauty and the horror of the Animus. Mm. A device that allows us to enter and experience the lives of our ancestors. It's Behold cool how they're retelling the whole story here a little bit. To show us history the way it really happened. Up until its creation, to the victor went the spoils, went the truth. Mm -hmm. We're trying to fix that, to free minds and bodies both. But there's That's only nice so sword. much that we can do. And the Templars have the upper hand these days. But something larger than the Assassins and Templars is approaching. Bigger than all of us. And if we can't find a way to stop it, these next few weeks will probably be our last. Everyone's last. Yikes. In the end, it all comes down to him. To Desmond. Through the Animus, he discovered his heritage, explored the lives of his ancestors, and uncovered their secrets. When that was done, he trained. He used another ancestor to provide decades of experience in the span of a few days. Yeah. It worked. We think. We think. We hope. Soon, though, soon we'll know that ominous date fast approaches. December 21st, 2012. None of us knows what it'll bring. 2012. This is where they want us to be. Great disaster movie, by does. the way. They've been guiding us in their own fractured, frustrating way. These voices from the first civilization, the ones who came before, a precursor race of immense power and uncertain motives. They're the ones who made the pieces of Eden. Right. This is where they've led him, and through him, us. He stands at the entrance to this long lost place, armed with the knowledge of Altair and the abilities of Ezio. He holds in his hands the apple of Eden, and we stand at his side, ready to support him however we can. His name is Desmond Miles, and he has brought us to the end. Here we are. What a great intro. I think that's a fantastic intro. Oh, here we go. How's the volume, uh, Jacob? Orphan? I recognize it, but I don't think I watched it. It's so white. <laughs> you can hear it? Okay. This is uh, quite the, the van ride. Oh, there's a tree. <laughs> All right. Man, that be how they looked like, too. We're here. 
So this is Daddy Dearest. I still think they did Desmond dirty with the way they kind of upgraded his facial modeling in Revelations. I, I liked it before, but hey, it is what it is. Let's go. All right. We. <laughs> All right. Cave. Hold up. So my question is real quick. I like how we have our little glow stick there. About to hit up a rave or what? Okay, I can't go back here. But it's like, dude, where did we drive in from? Ubisoft? Did we straight just barreled ass down some trees or what? Like, come on now. Come on now. Like, I guess we came through there, maybe? But hey, man, I've seen enough CSI side. I know that angle's just way off. <laughs> Tell Nikki to watch it? Yeah, for sure, bro. But you were, you got pretty hammed, huh? <laughs> All right. It's kind of dark down here, but we are in a cave, of course. Oh, yo. Nice, we got some uh, graffiti. Eagle vision that shit, my boy. Hmm. So obviously, at the end of Revelations, Ezio told Desmond where to find the Apple of Eden, which was in uh, um, the original Assassin's Place from AC1. I should remember the in name. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. Mm. Uh, Al Mualim was there, like he was the, the first guy. What? Dude, I should remember the name. <laughs> I remember no problem in Revelation. <coughs> anyway, we went there, got the Atlas, probably how we got it. I love how they're all carrying shit. I'm just like walking, you know. You're shocked. Saw where's your first kill? First one? Gotcha. Oh, good. Now I can finally run. Really? We're not gonna do the thing? Are you gonna force me? A lot of invisible walls here, Ubisoft. I'm disappointed so far. Oh, hell yes, Jacob. Absolutely gonna watch Live. I think Listen. we're here. Absolutely. Nikki and I were actually talking about it today. Oof, that's a steep. And they're gonna carry the boxes all the way down here? Come on, guys. Come on, slide down with the boxes. Ooh, crazy little drawings and stuff. Yeah, I know. I know. But hey, I gotta watch it so I can determine if they do if they did a good job or not, you know what I mean? You boy jump. What crazy underground cave, man. And they did a decent job because there's some mini side quests in here too. Yeah, keep holding those boxes, guys. Yeah, I'm excited for the show. You know they have Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson in small roles in, in the TV series? You know that? I think that's so fucking cool. And it's not just like little cameo things either. You were scared last of us too? Yeah, man. It was an intense game. It really was. Wakey, wakey. Eggs and bakey, ancient civilization people. We're here. to see how the series evolved since the first Assassin's Creed to this one. 
And from the Assassin's key. Creed 2, so you far. Must find the key. Okay. Son. Sir. What? Here we go again. <laughs> That's right, Nolan North. There we go, Nolan North. Desmond? Do you hear us? Uh, you the Desmond uh, Yeah. Oh, we're talking. We see his mouth moving. The temple triggered a bleeding effect. You collapsed and entered into a fugue state. So naturally, you dropped me into the Animus instead of, I don't know, making sure I was okay? <laughs> Look at his feet, too. You weren't in any danger. Besides, the temple appeared to be communicating with you. And I didn't want to risk severing the connection. Yeah. At least not until we knew what it wanted. Right. Of course. Son, I... <laughs> no, it's fine. I get it. And I know what I'm looking for, by the way. We, he it's does? a key. Okay. Just no idea where it is, though. It does look like he's rocking some cons, doesn't it? I guess that's why she triggered the bleeding effect. She? Juno, Dad. She's talking to me. Okay. It's so... Okay, Desmond. While you were, uh, visiting Constantinople, we picked up a software update for the Animus. Nice. I'd like to run a couple of quick tests, make okay. sure there aren't any major issues. All, All right. right. What do you need me to do? We'll start simple. Walk to the marker over there. Whoa. Yeah, it's gonna run us through all the basic shit. Woo! Desmond, pick up some parkour moves, baby. Let's go. Okay, Desmond. Let's practice climbing on these objects. Okay. Desmond's really, like, up his game. You can tell. Upsy daisy, buddy. Nah, dude, this is like the kind of like the animus being all weird. This is, uh. They need a way to do the training. They brought in probably some new mechanics uh, for Assassin's Creed 3. It's, it's funny that Nolan North is like Nathan Drake, like this crazy free climber, and now he's also Desmond Miles, who's also crazy. You run your way through this little obstacle. Boing, 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 boing. Here we go. Whee! That's a constraint. These are optional objectives that raise your synchronization rate. What? Is there someone to air assassinate here that I'm missing? Hey, nice chest, bro. All right, Desmond. Follow the on-screen instructions and kill the two Templars. Done. All you have to do here is jump the gap. It's like butter, baby. Wait, what? Did I not jump the gap? They're diving? Oh, for sure, bro. You know, we there's, they, there's diving for sure. Whoa, where are we going here? Everything is so white and gray, man. Oh, hold up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Am I missing something here? We should be able to yeet. I'm so confused right now. It looks like it wants me to go there. Like, this is the training session, guys. If this is training, I'm having a hard time, but we're in trouble. <laughs> there we go. I don't know why I wouldn't do it normally, but fuck it. Do, do. Doop. Wee. There we go. And oh, hold on. Hold on. Ye. There we go. That's not as intuitive though. You would think like it's there, so I would automatically swing that. But he does his little parkour thing first. Don't get me wrong. The parkour seems pretty sweet. Uh, nice little addition. Cause hey. Since Assassin's Creed 2, they were improving and improving. Brotherhood was Assassin's Creed 2 was night and day better. Synchronization levels were good now. We should be able to build the world. 
Ooh. Time to find out what the temple wants from you. Yep. Oh, look at me! I'm so fancy. Dun, 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 dun. Um. So yeah, Assassin's Creed 2 was like the blueprint of what you would want a sequel to be. Brotherhood had some nice little tweaks and improvements on AC2. Revelation's the same little couple improvements on uh, Brotherhood. So you know they had to keep going, right? Mine's an Airwatch juice? Yeah. It's, it's actually kind of trippy, man, with all this shit. Like, this is trippy. So we're a new assassin and a new time frame. American Revolution, here we come, baby. Uh, everything all right, sir? Yes, fine. I'm just preoccupied, that's all. <laughs> Don't forget your invitation. Master Birch will be meeting you inside. Thank you. Where shall I retrieve you once you're done? In front of the Opera House. And be quick about it. Don't expect to be here long. <laughs> I'll bring her round at once. All right. I guess we got a mission to start a deadly performance. I brought them. Invitation, please. <laughs> Shall I take your coat, sir? Fuck off. <laughs> He's like, what do I do with this shit? <laughs> Beastly, we got a new email. Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to kindly find your seats. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We, you know, it's, oh, this is a nice little update to the GUI. It really is. Okay. Here we are. Of course, we're here to learn something, my chaps. What journey is this? It's a clothing store? Oh, okay. I don't think we have any up here. Here we are. You might hear this referred to as Covent Garden, which it faces, or the Royal Opera House, which it later became. However, this is the original Theatre Royal building, opened in 1732, destroyed by fire in 1808. It will be rebuilt, then destroyed by fire again in 1857, and then almost completely renovated in the 1990s. They've installed a smoke detector this time. Good job, guys. The original theater lamp was varied, containing ballet, operas, even acrobatics. Many of Handel's operas opened up right here until his death in 1759, when he mysteriously stopped writing them. But the building was mainly used for presenting plays, at least for the first hundred years of its history. The reason? It held the exclusive rights to perform spoken drama in London, Awarded by King Charles II. Yes, kings could do that. Though why they would is beyond me. Okay. Cool. You know what? Sure, why not? Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice try. Sean Acing is one of the few members of the Assassins who wasn't raised to join the Order. He was recruited as a teenager after his investigations into Abstergo Industries made him a target for the Templars. Hastings is a gift for organization, and as such, the Assassins would be lost without him. With his talent for making connections between historical events, he's widely regarded as the most intelligent person in the Order. And by widely regarded as the most intelligent person in the Order, I mean he is the most intelligent person in the Order. You may think he's an arrogant bastard, which I do, but that's only because he's smarter than you and like the less than able teenage girl you find yourself not yet secure enough to move past your inherent and powerful feelings of joyless jealousy and simply appreciate me for who I am. Who's writing this? <laughs> Oh good, you're actually reading these. I was beginning to wonder if I was wasting my time. Because you know how much I love wasting my time. <laughs> now, make me some tea, would you? Fuck you, Sean. <laughs> oh, he is a bastard, though. He is smart as fuck. Ezio Auditore. Oh, man, we've been enjoying the last three games with this, man. Ezio Auditore de Firenze was a master assassin during the Italian Renaissance, as well as being an inheritor of the mysterious ability of Eagle Vision and one of your ancestors. Ezio was something of a playboy in his teenage years, but his life changed in 1476 when his father and brothers were arrested and executed for treason. Ezio tried to save them, but the evidence clearing their names mysteriously disappeared in the hands of a family friend. Instead, they were hanged as Ezio looked on. Ezio fled with his mother and sister in Monteregioni, where he saw refuge with his uncle Mario Auditore. While Ezio had originally intended to continue on and settle in Spain, Mario had other ideas. He was the leader of the Italian Assassin Brotherhood and spent the next several years training Ezio and convincing him to help fight the Templars responsible for the deaths of his father and brothers. Whew. 
Ezio spent the next decade assassinating his way through the Templar ranks, eventually cornering the Templar Grand Master Rodrigo Borgia. Also, he was Pope something. In 1487, Borgia got away, but Ezio was able to recover an apple of Eden and was formally inducted into the Assassin Order. That was Assassin's Creed too. After several setbacks over the next few years, Ezio traveled to Rome in 1499 to confront Rodrigo, who by then had become Pope Alexander VI. Okay, there we go. After defeating Rodrigo, sparing his life, Ezio opened a hidden vault under the Sistine Chapel. There he discovered a message left by the first civilization, warning of a catastrophe that would threaten to wipe out humanity. Yes, that would be the one we're facing right now. Over the next 20 years or so, Ezio worked at strengthening the Italian Assassin Brotherhood and fighting the Templars, which is sort of what we do. One of his greatest accomplishments would be discovering the hidden library belonging to Altair Masiaf. Hidden under the former Assassin's Rome Masiaf and containing another message from the first civilization. He retired from the Brotherhood shortly thereafter, which is what we call ending on a high note. <laughs> he was terrific at jumping, too. Ezio died in Florence in 1524. Sells vans, function Okay, yeah, I, we have stores like Journeys up here, though. It may not be called Journeys, but we have stores that sell that type of stuff. That was a lot of reading. I'm going to wet the whistle here. All right, here we go. <coughs> oh, God. Still got the cough a little bit, guys. <coughs> Altair Ibn Lahad was born into the Assassin Brotherhood in the stronghold of Masiaf. His early life wasn't a happy one. His mother died during childbirth. Then, when he was a young boy, his father was killed during the first siege of Masiaf. Only shortly thereafter, the Assassin... He died... Hold on. Only... Shortly thereafter, the assassin he died to save committed suicide in front of the 11-year-old Altair. That's a shitty childhood. With his parents gone, Altair looked to Al Mualam, the then mentor of the order, as father figure. Al Mualam recognized Altair's potential and took on his training personally. Altair reached the rank of master assassin by the age of 25, an unheard of accomplishment. If there was an assassin book of records, there'd probably be a picture of this fella on the front. Altair was one of the best fighters in assassin history, with an arrogance to match. After a disastrous mission in 1191, in which he broke the creed and very nearly let an apple of Eden fall into the Templar hands, Altair was sent back down to novice rank and forced to begin again. As part of his rehabilitation, he was responsible for taking out the major players in the Templar order of the time, including the Grand Master Robert de Sable. Tragically, in the end, he was also forced to kill Al Mualim, who turned out to be both a Templar and, a corrupt, and was corrupted by the influence of the apple. I think he was more corrupted by the apple than he was a, a Templar, Templar, from what I remember. After his mentor's death, Altair took control of the order, turning it into the secret and world-spanning organization it is today. One of the things that made Altair such a deadly assassin was something we call Eagle Vision, a kind of sixth sense inherited from the first civilization. It allows him to read his enemies and surroundings in a way that goes beyond what the human eye can see. Of course, you'll know more about it than me, can't believe I just typed that. Because it's in your blood, and that's part of why you're here. Well, let's be honest. You weren't you knew you weren't here because of my enduring affection or my warm, passionate cuddles. Fuck you, Sean. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Alright, hold on. We already looked at this. Yeah, we already looked at this. What the hell? What the hell, game? <coughs> cough, cough. All right. Yo, look at this theater, man. Dude. This is extravagant, man. Especially all the side things. I hope I don't fart. Apologies. Well, hey, man, you gotta get to your seat, right? All right, what are we doing here? Evening, Haytham. Reginald? I can't tell you how happy I was to hear they'd mounted this revival. Gay's best work by far. Have you seen it before? Once. My father brought me here as a child. Though I remember little of it. I don't suppose tonight will afford me the luxury of a proper viewing either. <laughs> no, I'm afraid it won't. 
On to business then. Do you see him? There he is. He's seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. You'll need to find another way up. Aha! I already have. What makes me think about the box is like there is uh, the two front seats. And then there was some behind. It's like, dude, only the front two people are going to see that shit. A thousand pardons. A thousand pardons. So sorry. <laughs> Sit the fuck down, boy. <laughs> Let's learn about Reginald Birch. Reginald Birch was a London merchant, the son of another London merchant, who, conveniently enough, also had the last name Birch. Seems it was one of those hard-to-put-your-fingers-on things that ran in the family. Ooh. I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. Birch started in business for himself at an early age. By the time he was in his mid-twenties, he already owned several merchant ships, mainly dealing with the tea trade to the American colonies. That's pretty good going, seeing as by the time most people are in their twenties, they don't even own a shirt. Yeah, they probably financed it with a credit card. I have him as part owner of the Providence, among others. Later in life, Birch also owns several businesses in and around London. He was a member of Remember, he was a member of Whites. That's racist, isn't it? Oh. Which, okay, it was a posh judgment club in London, which is also probably racist anyway. And generally a well-known, respected man about town. We're going to tell Birch met Haytham Kenway while working for his father, Edward. Oh. We are Haytham Kenway. Not Edward Haytham Kenway. Okay. They were introduced at White's while well, Haytham was still quite young. Birch would eventually take over Haytham's education, tutoring him on a tour of Europe in the 1730s. From what we've seen in the Animus, it seems their friendship continued into adulthood, with them working together as members of the Assassin. Right. Okay. That's right. I think uh, Edward was uh, Black Flag. Ah. Can I get that? No. Like, bro, how is this not obvious? There's people on the other side, bro. They're gonna see me. Like, what? Oh, dude, yeah. How's it going, guys? Yeah, get in there, man. Get in there. He's just straight motorboating, man. Oh, she didn't like that. Okay, hey. Oh, no. Oh, she... <laughs> She's like, get the fuck back in here. Let's go. All right, I'll leave you two at it. I'll leave you alone. It, you kids have a good night. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's calm. At first, I thought she was like, whoa. whoa. And she's like, no, fuck this shit. <laughs> Eat those titties. <laughs> Oh my goodness. If Nikki hears me, she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? See, like, look, there's seats in the back. I was talking about this, right? Like, this front row, they can see. But how do the people behind them see? Like, dude, everyone back there, how are, like, all those people can fucking see me? This is not covert ops at all. This is not... Nah, man. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just part of the show, guys. <laughs> Ooh, lock picking. I forgot about this. Dude. I forgot they brought the whole lockpick thing in here. That's cool. This is a cinematic event. I wouldn't miss it for the world. We haven't played this game in 10 years, man. This is almost basically brand new to me. Like, there's a few things I, I barely remember. Uh, whoopsie. I 
Baker's Opera. What do we got? The Baker's Opera uh, opened in London in 1728. It's a musical, one of the earliest ever created, actually. It was written by John Gay, a writer and friend of Alexander Pope and Jonathan Swift, two of the prominent literary figures of the day. The opera was both popular and controversial, probably why it was so popular. Popular partly because it is an excellent skewering of Italian opera, which was very popular at the time. However, instead of complicated Italian songs, the Beggar's Opera featured folk tunes that the audience could recognize, meaning you could hum along even if you didn't know Italian. It was controversial because of the subject matter. It's set in the Newgate prison, and the main characters are all criminals who act much like the upper classes. Ooh. It was a send-up of the British nobility, including veiled criticism at the head of government, neither of whom traditionally have a sense of humor. I've never met a queen who liked a knock-knock joke. Artemis? What the fuck are you doing? Actually, I've never met a queen. The Bigger's Opera was accused of being a base form of entertainment because its main characters were criminals accused of causing increase in crime. It's nice to see that criticism isn't just for movies and video games. Bloody opera corrupting our kids. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Sean, you're a bastard, but I still enjoy your commentary. Not the moon! Jesus. Yeah, no one can see me. No, you can't see me. We're just gonna drop? Oh, we're gonna go over here. Here we go. There we go. Come on, Haytham. Besides, certainty gives a man a good air. You have to lockpick? No lady with him? You should have come to me. We would have found another way. Yes. But then you would have known. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. As am I. Mm. Ooh, a child is there. Hello, child. That kid looked kind of janky, ain't gonna lie. Alright, time to get the fuck out of here. Time to go. Calm, please. Whoa. Crazy how people are here all of a sudden, you know what I mean? Yeah, excuse me. Pardon me. Someone just murdered. Someone just died. It happened right in that balcony. What are those men doing in there? Well, I did see a man and a lady having a good time. Hmm. Order. We must hey. Excuse me? Pardon me. The fast walk doesn't seem to. Whoa, dude. Jeez, those guys are. Give him a rough, rough ride there. I'll search it on here. You search down there. Very well. If you find anyone, give a shout. They're not gonna let us out. They're gonna keep everyone here. Excuse me. Fuck off. Oh, dude. That background of the animus is trippy. And how was the opera? Rather dull, truth be told.
Shall we be off then? Aye. To Fleet and Bride. By your command. So what is this all about? I lo look at the, the the jagged angles, man. Like this is PS3 for sure. Fascinating. Gentlemen, I hold in my hand a key. And if this book is to be believed, it will open the doors of a storehouse built by those who came before. Ah, yes. Those who ruled, reigned, and vanished from the world. Do we know what it is that will be held within? It could contain certain knowledge. Perhaps a weapon, or something as yet unknown, unfathomable in its construction and purpose. It could be any of these things, or none of them. They are still an enigma, these precursors. Okay. But of one thing I am certain. Whatever waits behind those doors shall prove a great boon to us all. Or our enemies, should they find it first? They won't. You've seen to that. Hmm. I assume you know where this storehouse is? Ah, Mr. Harrison. Gentlemen. How fair your calculations? I believe the site lies somewhere within this region. That's a lot of ground to cover. My apologies. Were that I could be more accurate. That's all right. It suffices <laughs> for a start. That's such that a backhand. You here, <laughs> That's Kenway. such a backhand response. Like for you to travel I to apologize. America, Sorry, I'm not as good as you, you need me to be, fucker. <laughs> I'm yours to command. For PS3, the, the skin texture's pretty more. damn good. Myself. Of course. The eye movement too. Upon this paper are the names of five men sympathetic to our cause. Each is also uniquely suited to aid you in your endeavor. With them at your side, we'll want for nothing. Well, then I'd best be on my way. I knew our faith in you was not misplaced. We booked you passage to Boston. Your ship leaves at dawn. All right. Go forth, Haytham, and bring honor to us all. Yeah, because those guys, what are they? <laughs> Just bumpkins? They can't do shit, right? Full sink, baby. I'm good. I don't need to see the progress. <laughs> What's up, Hathen? Welcome to the Animus, buddy. Yeah, you gotta do the Animus dance. Animus dance, 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 dance. Aw. That's a pretty fast load time, though. Not bad, not bad. This is when they start bringing in the whole ship thing in prep for Black Flag. That water looks pretty solid. That looks pretty good. I was gonna say water looks solid. You get it. It looked really good. Like I said, this is not a PS3, guys. This isn't a remastered version at all. <coughs> Some fresh air might do me good. Yeah, this is like a small little office here, isn't it? Yeah. Cramped quarters. Providence, let's have a look. The Providence was one of me. Uh, the Providence was one of many sailing ships in the British Merchant Navy, which basically means it was a trade ship rather than one meant for war. You'll notice it's carrying cannon, but those are mainly for protection against pirate or privateer vessels, or for turning the ship into a privateer vessel should the need arise. The ship was built in 1748 and made of several trips a year between Britain and the North American colonies, with occasional visits to the West Indies. The manifest doesn't indicate anything particularly interesting. Mostly it carried staples like tea, molasses, and cloth. It's captained by its part owner, one Samuel Smythe, who got something of a reputation among sailors for both cruelty to his crew and petty pinching on rations. Uh, not the best ship you want to work on. Incidentally, that's not exactly a way to keep good sailors on board. The crew is probably both inexperienced and disgruntled. Ideally, you want an experienced crew who are hugely gruntled. <laughs> Although you likely don't know much about running an 18th century sailing vessel, odds are you won't notice the difference. True. Um, we had rice, uh, spiced pork, um, and then veggies. Nice little stir fry. Baby corn, saute, carrots, peppers, onions, um, broccoli. Yeah, 
It's Nami, man. How about you? Dude, I can talk. That's right, I can talk to these people. Good morning, Doctor. To you as well. A question, if I may. Do you serve aboard the ship, or are you simply taking passage? A bit of both, actually. I've been commissioned by the Royal Navy to study maritime illness. I'll be observing the crew during the journey. We have found that uh, sailors fare far better on the open seas than the rest of us. I hope to discover why that is. Ah. Well, I hope you are successful in your endeavors. As do I. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the kind words. Spicy pork is for you. ZT meatballs? What's ZT? And when I say spice, I mean like it was flavored with some spices. It wasn't spicy, but we used some, some nice spice to flavor it. Oh, there's a dude in here to talk to. Have a moment to talk? Ah, a fellow Londoner. Good to see I'm not the only man of means aboard. Ah. Rupert Martin, pleased to meet you. Haytham Kenway. Pleasure. Seems we picked an excellent time to leave the city. Oh? You didn't hear about the murder at the Opera House? The murder? Well, what happened? They're still trying to sort it all out. And I suspect they'll be at it for a good long while. Any word on the moat? They've ruled out robbery. So perhaps it was a business arrangement gone sour. Or something more personal. More lurid. Who knows? But I am glad to be away from it. The city grows more dangerous by the day. Oh, yes. Yeah, it was good, man. It was really good. Now they've added some dice. So, like, there's some ship games and stuff they added to this. So, right off the bat, Assassin's Creed 3 is bringing in new stuff that wasn't really as much of a thing before. Right? So, I'm not going to do the gambling thing at this point. But it's cool to see they added that. Atlantic Ocean! Let's learn about the Atlantic Ocean, kids! Of course, crossing the Atlantic today is as easy as a plane ride, but it was much more difficult in colonial times. Even though I imagine the tiny food and cramped conditions and likelihood of sitting next to a fat man for many hours are pretty much the same. <laughs> for European travelers, there's at best a six-week voyage. Dude, that's a month and a half on the water. Dude, I have a hard time going to Victoria. That's like an hour, hour and a half. Very right. Depending on the delay could last months, dangers include storms and their opposite being becalmed. Seasickness, food running short, and dying of boredom because you had nothing to do all day. For Africans captured into slavery, the Atlantic voyage was much worse across the Middle Passage, usually to the Caribbean. The journey was just as long, but slaves were kept below decks and rarely allowed out into the fresh air, with men usually in shackles. They were given only one meal a day, less if provisions were low. Disease was rampant, and mortality rates were high. I will never complain about being inappropriately touched by airport security again. Though to be fair, we're now firm friends, and Juan was very gentle. <laughs> I will give Sean credit, he's still an asshole, but he's been slowly but surely increasing the funny less asshole. <laughs> he had pizza, chicken and pepperoni, now that's unique. Was it a uh, tomato-based sauce or a cream-based sauce? Now, because now you're mixing some stuff up there. Like chicken, you usually have it as like a, um, like a chicken Caesar pizza, right? Or a Greek pizza or uh, pesto penne, uh, or sorry, not pesto penne, pesto chicken, you know, type pizza. It's usually a white sauce, right? So you're throwing me out with the chicken on there, but the pepperoni means it's usually a, a rose or a tomato sauce. So I wish you were up here, Jake, because I would take you in regards to pizza. Nikki and I get it usually once or twice a year from San Remo. It's like the best pizza place here in town, and it, it's expensive, but it's worth it. The money it's so good man you'd love it i know you'd love it all right yes men haul the gangway do the planks and the things to do the stuff <laughs> who's this guy is this captain captain ah mr kenway i just wanted to thank you again for taking me aboard 
and apologize for any inconvenience it may have caused. Inconvenience would be an understatement. I'm sorry, I don't follow. My ship was held in port for two days that we might accommodate you. I lost several contracts as a result. I had no idea. Of course not. You nobles are all the same. Ooh. Yeah, back then, man, like, nobles had so much power. They could fuck people over, man. They really could. And then all will be well. Are you sure about that? Of course. Have I ever led you astray? Nah. No, you don't sit right with the others. Have faith, my friend. You'll see. Well, well. Seems our esteemed guest has deigned to grace us with his presence. You might want to head back to your quarters. Top deck's no place for tender parnell. Oh, man. <laughs> so I thought. And yet here you are. Oh. Fancy yourself a joker, eh? Let's see how funny you find this. Oh, we're gonna start getting to a scrap. Can I take the hat off? Okay. Hold it. Okay. Oh, I need to do three more parries here. Look at his mouth, he's wide open, man. Okay, that doesn't count. The block doesn't count. There we go. Come on, buddy. Boom, bop. Oh, headbutt. Woo, sit down, son. Listen to this, Hector. Thinks he can swagger on up here and declare himself king of the castle. Oh, look at him bloody. Call this off. If the captain sees us. To hell with the captain. And to hell with you, Bill. Woo. Who signed you on anyway? Let's go. <laughs> We're ready to go again if you are. This is unwise. Why is that? You think I'm afraid of you? No. But you should be. Oh, you should be. Come on, bro. You got. It. You got. <laughs> Do you yield? Help him up. Oh shit. Do you like these eyes? Now, do you want to fuck around and find out or what? What's the meaning of this? Captain! Explain yourself at once, Mr. Kenway. These fought. We were simply passing the time with a bit of sport, Captain. How about you pass the time by doing your goddamn jobs instead? I wasn't aware I was paying you to loll about. A word, please, Mr. Kenway. We're all, he's already pissed at us. Now we're Oh, I nearly forgot. <laughs> Get <his knife> back. <laughs> See, the, the main guy, he was telling his guys, don't do it, man. Don't fuck around. I don't care for you, Mr. Kenway. I've had nothing but trouble since you came aboard. At least he's your honest. problems have nothing to do with me. I beg your pardon? You're a poor leader, ill-tempered and cruel, and it's clear your crew has no respect for you. Ooh. Talk to him! Look, I don't want to argue. In fact, I need a favor. Ooh, okay. Oh, this is rich. <laughs> I suspect some of the men intend to mutiny. Really? What a surprise. As I cannot trust any of them, I am compelled to turn to you. And why should I help you? Because if they do intend to betray, I'm the only hope you have of reaching America alive. That's true. Well, what will it be? If what you say is true, what other choice do I have? Thank you. But let me be clear. Should you ever dare to insult or threaten me again, I'll not hesitate but to cut off your head myself. Woo! Are we understood? Set those boundaries. Look at his eyes, he's like, okay, okay. <laughs> now we're drinking his drink. So disrespectful. Oh my god, I love it. He's pouring a separate glass. Oh shit.
it's fun stuff like this that like i said i haven't played this in 10 years guys so little funny things like this are, are showing up hit the, the they definitely improved on the lip sync you can see they really worked on the lip sync but it still looked kind of funny it looked like his mouth was kind of moving to the side while they did it you know what i mean <laughs> daisy's restaurant sounds good He's a chicken salmon, mozzi sticks, beef patties, tenders. Yeah, I'm all about the breakfast sandwiches. Uh, breakfast wraps, too. I love breakfast wraps. Get some uh, scrambled eggs, a little bit of hash brown potatoes in there, some bacon, chipotle sauce in there, some veggies, onions, peppers. Oh, <laughs> nom, nom, nom. That's, an, uh, that's all I'm going to talk to about that. Okay, there's a dude to talk to right here. Yo, he's up top though. Yo, we can run. How's it going there, Governor? Hello, sir. Do you expect we'll have a pleasant crossing? It is a quiet time of year, though rogue storms and troubled waters are not unheard of. But no need to fret. At worst, they'll prove an inconvenience. I'm more concerned about pirates and rogue privateers. Have you encountered them before? Aye. But the Providence is a strong ship. And her crew well trained. Okay. They will surely keep us safe. Oh, good to know. Back down below go we. <coughs> what we got? Oh, that's our little big keeping. Artemis, calm down. To breakfast by yourself if you want breakfast is good whether it's with people or not I mean it depends if you've been around people a lot and sometimes yeah it's nice to just kind of eat alone and just enjoy your meal and not have to worry about conversation and shit so he's writing about this little artifact here The water looks so good, and the, like that sky, like this is PS3, man. Like for PS3, this is pushing the end of the PS3's life cycle, if I remember correctly. Mr. Kenway. Captain? I could be wrong on that, though. Actually, no, it wasn't pushing the end. Whatever they're up to, I believe it's coming to a head. I'd best get to work. All right, Captain. Let's get into a fight, though, shall we? Limit health loss to ten percent. I'll do my best. He's got our rations again. Claims we're not provisioned for such luxuries. It's not right that you should feast on lamb and wine. What's up, buddy? Fish and biscuits. You looking for another fight? Is that it? Go away. Nah, oh, man, I just want to look at the stars. It's a beautiful night, man. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. Like, you know that, you know, right? Yeah, I'm not going to play uh, Dice Fair right now, man. Mutiny's about to go down. I ain't fucking around with that. Oh, Louis Mills. Oh, this is the guy. See, this guy, like, he was friends with the assholes, but he was like, guys, don't start a fight, man. I'm telling you, I haven't steered you wrong before. Don't fucking fight. And they didn't listen to him. You haven't got your own outside food for like four and a half years? Oh, shit. Well, hey, man, if you're able to, go enjoy. Louis Mills is a deckhand originally from where we British somewhat optimistically call Sunny Brighton. He got his love of the sea from his father, who was also a sailor. First took young Louis to see... Louis or Louis? Young Louis to sea with him at the age of 10, sailing from London to Boston on a vessel named the Windward. As he grew older... Nikki is doing some laundry. As he grew older, Mills kept working as a merchant marine, traveling the world, gaining a reputation as a reliable and level-headed sailor. He joined the crew of Providence in 1752, staying with the captain and crew through a variety of hardships. Though by 1755, he was thinking about moving on. Yeah, you can only deal with like shitty captain for so long, right? Quiet. 
quite the basting you gave Graves and Quill. Wasn't by choice. Aye. Blockheads, the both of them. Ha. Where are my manners? Louis Mills. Pleased to meet you. Hatham Kenway. You leave him hanging like that? So, should I be watching my back? I think the boys learned their lesson. That they're normally not so nasty. Honest, it's just the past few crossings have been a bit rough. Oh? Captain's trying to cut costs, reduce rations, lower wages, more dangerous cargo. It's put the crew on edge. Oof. Is there cause for concern, then? Not if I can help it. But the captain needs to think about the way he treats his men. Fox. You gotta treat your people well, or your people won't treat you well. <laughs> they fucked you up, buddy. <laughs> that's tough. You get into a fight with someone on a ship, that's close quarters. So if you win or lose, they're in your face the whole trip. That's tough, man. That's tough. Meatball pizza? Dude, I can see that work. I've had ground beef on pizza before. I'd be down for it. You there. I have some questions for you. That's nice. But I ain't got time to gossip. Probably wouldn't have anything useful to share anyway. You want information? Try the cook or the doctor. Everyone's always chatting them up. Yeah. That's true. We've already talked to the doctor, had a positive experience with him. That's good. Let's start with the doctor. We had a good experience with him. We already said hi to him. White cheese pizza? What do you mean white? What's white cheese? Mozzarella cheese is white. That's the main cheese on pizza. What are you talking about? <laughs> what you talking about, Jacob? Well, doctor, if you have a moment. Have you taken in? Oh, nothing like that. I was wondering if you'd heard any rumblings of trouble aboard. What sort of trouble? Unusual complaints or grievances. Men taking issue with the captain. You or the sound passengers. just like James. Like I told him, I've been much too busy with my research to notice anything not work-related. And where might I find James? The galley's your best bet. Okay, now, so it was the cook. Me. Okay. Cottage cheese? All right, I'm pretty open with things I enjoy. I will say this, me and cottage cheese, I and I love cheese. I, I, I'll eat blue cheese. I enjoy blue cheese. Cottage cheese and me are just not, I, nah, I can't do it, man. Can do it. Are you James? Hi. Atham Kenway. Pleased to meet you. I know who you are. Okay. I was hoping you could answer some questions. I figured as much, <laughs> but not here. Follow me. Ooh. So, what do you want to know? Have you seen or heard anything out of the ordinary since we left port? Anything that gives cause for concern? Some of the men have been gathering at night on the upper deck. I've only caught bits of their conversations, so I couldn't say for certain what they're up to. But I suspect it bodes ill. Is it a mutiny they're planning? All I know is they've little love for the captain. Mills has been trying to talk him down, but there's only so much one man can do. Yep. Thank you for the information. I only wish to see us reach the colonies alive. Not that I've seen in our whole relationship. I don't think I've ever seen her eat cottage cheese. Now I understand some people enjoy. It. I'm just not one of those people. Like to me, I I just can't get into. It. I, I, I yeah, man. I just yeah. Like the closest I get is I think the closest I would get to cottage cheese is feta. Cause that you know, feta, it's in like it's stored in brine for God's sake. So you know that, that a lot of people can see that's kind of gross. Cottage cheese is just chunky white bits, and I just can't get my head around it. All right, just about to go down. Evening, sir. How does he see? How are things? Calm and quiet. 
Just the way I like it. Mm. What brings you topside? Thought I'd wander a bit. Stretch my legs. That's all. Say care where you tread. The deck hides all manner of danger in the dark. Hmm. What was that? Someone's throwing cargo overboard. But why? What the fuck? Why would they do that? Yo, if you're on a ship and you already have limited provisions as it is, why the fuck would you be throwing shit overboard? Like I said, guys, it's been over 10 years since I played this. So, I think it's those those fuckers trying to start shit. Less rations mean less food. Less food means more excuse to start a problem. That's that's the vibe I'm getting here. He's got our rations again. Claims we're not provisioned for such luxuries. You're not provisioned because people are fucking throwing shit. We got a clue, Watson. All right. What do you got, Haytham? What do you got? I've heard of the legendary New York pizza, man. I just haven't had a chance to get to New York. That water looks so good. Curious. <laughs> curious. That's Most a curious. Understatement. I think so. What we got going on here? <laughs> so curious. You shall write a letter. <laughs> yes, that's what we shall do. Write a letter. Because of these curious happenings. Jesus, that water, though. Like I said, guys, like, this is PS3. Like, I'm, I'm impressed. Ubisoft really put effort in on this. A rice you cook? Just basic white rice, man. No, nothing... Not no jasmine or basmati. It's just some good old regular white rice. Any news? Each night it's the same. I scout one area, and they drop the painted barrels from another. I'm going to need to recruit an extra pair of eyes. Maybe James or Mills. Why are they doing this? Near as I can tell, the barrels serve as markers. They're leaving a trail. Okay. My fear is it's only a matter of time before whoever's following it. Ship sighted aft! She's Here we go. Getting ready to fire! Beat to quarters, men! Ready the... Yo. Race. Everybody down! There's no lip sync whatsoever to this dude. It looks so weird. A warning shot. Seems they don't mean to sink us, but board us instead. Man the cannons! Make ready to fight! That's so weird. I want you below decks. Why? Let me help you secure the ship. Do you know how to rig a sail, to load a cannon, to wage war at sea? He's I using think so. mental shit. Now return to your cabin, or do I need That's to so have you That's so creepy escorted? looking, dude. He's talking, but his mouth ain't moving. What the fuck? I guess the PS3 Secure had its limits. <laughs> have you been topside? A ship's appeared and means to board us. It's strange. There's no sign of mutiny aboard. Doesn't make sense. Ah, but it does. What do you mean? Really? Did you think you could escape from London so easily after what you did at the opera? What? That we wouldn't notice? That we wouldn't follow? Ah. Oh. He knew? So that's what this is about. Surrender, and I will see that you are treated with honor. If you wish to treat me with honor, give me a sword. Ooh. Are you sure? This is how you want to play it. Yo, dude, you can't be more legit than that. Guys, like, hey, man, you want to fight? Here you go. Here's your sword. Let's do it. That's fucking cool. Probably not the smartest thing, but I, I thought, man, I liked him a little bit. All right, let's do this. Okay. Ooh, hello. Can I attack? I can't attack. How do I break his defense? I 
can't kick him while he's down. Okay, I have to counter. Okay, let's just keep countering. Nice. We're just throwing him in the shit. That's all we're doing. Because we're a nice guy like that. I'm not like all the other girls. <laughs> just bonk. Come on, buddy. You got nothing against me, Mills. I think I already lost 100% sync, though. Doesn't do shit, though. Gotta find some more barrels or something to toss him into. Here, Millsy. What, 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 what? Cut to the roll. <laughs> okay. Bonk. God, like, how do I break his defense more? Okay, we can't do much here. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Keep knocking him over. Maybe that's the key not to knock him over. Ooh, that was slick. Lost your sword, bro. Lost your sword, bro. Now what? I let him pick it up. <laughs> I love the extra dive. Come on, Millsy. What do you got, buddy? Come on. <laughs> We're just like, humiliating this man. Like, I could kill him. Oh, my God. Dumbass, get the fuck off me. You're not good, bro. You're not that guy. Aw, <laughs> oh, did you fall down? Did you have a problem? No, nope. get out of here, bro. I'm knocking you on your ass. I just wish it was more clear how to actually hurt him so I get this shit over with. You're throwing him in the shit. Give me just a little bit more room here. Boop, bonk. That should hurt him. Like, I should be able to stomp him or something, you know what I mean? Dumbass. Dude, all we're doing is tossing him like this. I'm like, dude, maybe there's a barrel over here I can throw him into. Boom, there we go. How's that feel, buddy? I'm just going to keep you in this corner until you cry for your mommy. You got Millsy. Like, that doesn't even really hurt him, per se. Like, this is kind of annoying. Should at least let me fucking stop him or something, you know what I mean? I'm watching his health right now. Like, it's barely going down. You're going to do that, buddy. Like, dude. Yeah. Humiliate, isn't it? I'm not even letting you get your sword, buddy. I'm not even killing you. I'm just playing with you. Just a little toy. Oh, shit. Never mind. He's almost dead. We almost got him. Well, he's almost incapacitated. Come on, bro. What do you got? Nope. Just get over there. Okay, that hurt him a little bit. I saw it go down a little bit. I'd be so humiliated. It's like, dude, he's not even trying to kill me. He's just throwing me around a lot. Like, bruh. Sit, get off me. <laughs> like, were you drinking before you wanted to fight me or what? It was a big run, man. Hold up. What's good, Wolf Throne? How you doing, man? I was on the ground. I've been trying to. It won't let me. The bits you play AC3, you should be able to hit him while you're sword. That's what I thought too. It's been 10 years. When we started this, I looked at my last save. It's like basically 10 years since I played this game, dude. Welcome to the stream, by the way. It's good to have you, man. I'll give it a try when he's on the ground. Come on, boy, where you at? Bonk. See? It won't let me. I'm pressing everything here. It won't let me. Is there something else I can use? Yeah, every button, every button. So let me attack the wolf. Sorry, we almost got him here. He's low on health. Come on, buddy. Oh, you thought you were slick? See, like, break the fence. That doesn't work unless I counter. Dumbass. Eh. 
Like, we're so close. Come on, Millsy, you're done, buddy. All I'm doing is push them around. I'm like a bully. I'm bullying this man. That's what we're doing here. Like, dude. I'm getting all going up to him here. Yeah, nothing I'm doing. There we go. Knocks him down at least. Oh, there we go. It's square. It was square the whole fucking time. What? No, we're good. We got it. I told you to stay below decks. I did as you asked. Only Mills was there waiting for me. He's the one that drew that ship here. There was no mutiny. Only him. What do they want? Me. Then they can have you. Hmm. Is that so? They'll catch us anyway. There's nothing to be done. I can think of something. Oh, yeah? You wish us to sail into the storm. It's our only chance. Fuck yeah, let's I go. Do it. And then I will. All right. All right. <laughs> Man. When I first played this, I had no idea this was like a precursor to Black Flag. Which is one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games. It's like up there in my top three. <clears throat> so this is great. Well, so you, what was the last time you played this Wolf Throne? Like I said, for me it's like ten years. And right now I'm. I'm we need those ropes secured. Okay. I told you this was bad. yourself. I'll fix your sail for you. Okay, I guess we're gonna do that. So, I've been, uh, it's been a while since I've played the Assassin's Creed games, right? And so, I wanted to actually start playing some of the newer ones, but I, after Black Flag, I hadn't played any of them. So, I'm like, you know what, let's play all the old ones first, get up to date, and then we'll get into the new ones. So, we finished Revelations about a week and a half ago, and I'll get back to the Assassin's Creed 3, and, and these are like good books to me. You know, a good book, you always come back to it, and so far, these little nuances I totally forgot. And I'm enjoying already. So after Black Bag, I figure what uh, the next one is, but I'm I'm kind of looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Oh shit! All right, let's get to it. It's fun watching all the improvements and the tweaks that Ubisoft did over time with the different games, because they have to do some new shit. They had to, and even with all the stuff they did, I mean they still push them out too frequent. I think so. People just had too much of a. Too much Assassin's Creed, they got Assassin Creed out. That's why after Black Flag, I was like, it was a really good game, but I don't know why I want to keep playing, you know? Oh, we gotta get up there. Alright. Climb up here. Uh, that's a kill. Come on, Hatham. Atta boy, there we go. What are the games you like to play? Uh, Wolf? What do you like to play with like to watch, man? Oh shit, I thought I jumped off. That was intense. That looks so cool with the lightning. Rogue's next one, okay, nice. Good to know. Because after Assassin's Creed 3, that was the end of the Desmond. So you saw it's like Assassin's Creed 4, what the fuck is the point? Right? So that's what kind of stopped me. But now, hey man, I'm just enjoying being back in the whole Assassin's Creed universe. Oh yeah, let's get him. We get him? Yeah, we got this. Help! Got him, coach. I love the slow mo, man. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, thank you. I did do a reaction series actually um, to all of the cinematic trailers to every Assassin's Creed. So we did that. That was pretty fun. Uh oh. Those guys got fucked up. What's up? <laughs> but yeah, Wolf, what do you... Okay, here you are. Skyrim fan, nice. Some Grand Theft Auto, right on. Ghost Recon, tactical like that. Rear Notch, pretty cool. What are you not? What is that? I'm a, I'm a dad of, like, two kids, so I don't have a chance to really uh, keep up to date with a lot of stuff. Although, I am... I, I do know a little bit, but... But... What is that? Oof, Atham's having a... Did you drink too much last night, buddy, or what? He's not happy about something. 
Wait, what? What? How am I supposed to meet him at the bow if it's locked? <laughs> ah, here we are. Rare Nuts a game where you're essentially a SWAT spec op guy and you go in and clear houses. Oh, okay, cool. I guess, okay, that makes sense. Ready or not, here we come. We're coming in. Because you've probably already done, like, you've set up your people. It's like a strategy kind of in a way too, right? Is it similar to, oh, what's that? Um, oh, dude. Game by EA. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. My bad. Make ready for our arrival, men. Nice. Arrival? I see no land, only this interminable fog. The gulls tell us all we need to know. Climb into the crow's nest and you'll see. The crow's nest? It should be called gull nest, because there's no crows out at sea, only gulls, right? Or am I wrong? Rescue hots, take down terror, stuff like that. Yeah, what's, there's like a, a game, uh, oh, dude. There's a fucking really well-known game, I think EA does it. What is it? I'm so, I'm, oh, drawing a big blank. But it's, yeah, it's tactical, right? You have different classes where you have to uh, infiltrate like a hostage situation, right? And then you have to uh, exfil them, right? Stuff like that. Oh, God, what is that game? I'm so dumb right now. But it's, it's, it's cool if it's like that. All right, hate them. Let's have a look, you see. I do like the main theme. That was the intro. I like the main th uh, musical theme of Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I do. Welcome to Boston. Journey to the New World. Nice. Now, I'm not going for 100% completion on this, by the way. Like, my very first playthrough I did 10 years ago, I got 75% completion. So, I'm pretty... That's pretty good. I don't know if we'll do even as good as that this time. Back then, I just had fun messing around and finding stuff. This time, it's... I'll do side quests. I do, I do do side quests if it helps with me getting stronger, but... Battlefield. Yeah, not Battlefield. What is it? Rainbow Six Siege. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck, I feel embarrassed. I don't... I, like, dude, Rainbow Six. How... Mm. Da, da. Do the Animus Dance. Oh, it's Ubisoft. Rainbow Six Siege. Okay, I thought it was EA. My bad. It's similar with 6v6. So, hold up. With Ready or Not, is it not 6v6? What... Or maybe it's, like, slightly different format? I'm curious, though. Here we are, Boston, 1754. All right, Ezio, we miss ya, but we're moving on, man. American Revolution, here we come. Master Kenway, Master Kenway. Yes, may I help you? Charles Lee, sir. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. I've been asked to introduce you to the city, help you settle it. Oh, no need, sir. I've arranged for your bags to be delivered to the inn. Thank you, sir. Uh, about the good. Any chance, John and Isabella's son. All right, let's learn about Charles Lee here real quick. I, I've said so many times, that if I could learn history through this in school, like, I would have gotten straight A's. Charles Lee was a British soldier who wanted to be a major figure in the Revolutionary War. Lee's father was colonel of the British Army, started his son off in a military career early. He was sent to military academy in Switzerland. Ooh, Switzerland? A military academy in Switzerland? Damn. Then in 1746, Lee became an ensign to his father's regiment. Lee was sent to the colonies in 1755 to fight in the French and Indian War. He served under Edward Braddock and then later at Fort Ticara, Ticonderoga. I'm Canadian, by the way, so bear with me with some of the names. Where he was injured in the fighting. Lee recovered and later fought at Fort Niagara. I always thought there were a lot of fort fights fought. FFF. He finished his time in the colonies with the British conquest of Montreal. Lee returned to England in 1760, possibly because he was seeking career advancement. He was named a major in 1761 and was sent to fight the Spanish in Portugal. Ooh, man, he's all over the world. And that's when it was took a long time to get places. Though his service record there was good, Lee didn't receive praise on his return home. In fact, he was retired from the army at half pay. Ugh. After that, Lee became a vocal critic of military higher-ups. Yeah, he's probably better about that shit. And the British Prime Minister, and found that his military career had inexplicably... Completely stalled. <laughs> uh, it works that way. It's a single player co op? Yo, I bet that could be fun for co op. You could run some fun co op shit. Nice. What's the max co op? Like two co op? Or like what's the party max co op party? <coughs> Alright. One and the same. Your commission is with Edward Braddock, is it not? Aye. 
but he's yet to reach America, and I figured I might... Well, at least until he arrives, I thought. Yes? Out with it? Forgive me, sir. I had... I had hoped that I might study under you. Hello, sir. If I am to serve the Order, I can imagine no better mentor than yourself. Ah. Kind of you to say, but I think you overestimate me. Impossible, Oh, what happened to that chick, This dude? way. Oh, man. Are we doing? Are we? Let's do this. Can we stop him. Are Austin we doing? Is quite a lively city. Ah. Oh. Okay, okay. I thought I could help, but maybe not. There's all manner of things to see and do. Once you've settled in, I suggest you take some time to walk the streets. Ha. Who knows what opportunities you might. Have. Yeah, that's the game saying. Explore oh, everything. We need to fetch a few things before we get to work. Rich regulars, let's check them out. <coughs> Not 100 sure. There's a YouTuber watching G Lid who has squad like five or six you play with. Okay, cool. So it looks like you have like I guess a squad of six. It reminds me of Resistance 2's co-op because it's it's uh, PVE, right? Or yeah, it's it's person versus environment, but you have a co-op team versus enemy. Because in Resistance 2, back in the day, it had a really good co-op. I miss it so much. That's how old I am. I'm fucking old, dude. But you can have up to six people in the co-op party going up against different levels and stages and to that you have to win. So that sounds like similar to that. I could be off base though. I might have to check it out after after the stream. Thanks for letting me know about it. Now, the British regulars were the foot soldiers of the British Army. You'll also hear them referred derisively as red coats. Ah. Because of the red coats they wear as part of the uniforms, I'll bet you didn't see that one coming. Or lobster backs, that's actually kind of funny. Whoa, hold up, whoa, 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 what was that? Was that you, Wolf Throne? Huh? Got that notification? Uh, I gotta wait 10 seconds on the delay here. Check the review, was that you? Thank you for the follow, man, I appreciate that. Lucky to have you. Lobster backs because they're huge, deadly pincers. <laughs> okay, calm down, Sean. Or still because of the red coat thing, I can't remember which. Regulars in the colonies were notoriously underpaid, and many looked for work outside of their army duties to make ends meet. Of course, their room and board was paid for by the government, meaning they could charge lower than average rates for their work. Ah, sneaky. Since unemployment was high in Boston before the revolution, you can imagine this made the red coats rather unpopular among people they were taking work from. Right. So they undercut the locals to get work. That and their huge deadly pincers. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, we uh, we generally stream. I have a, a cycle of games I stream right now. What are we doing? Uh, I'm doing Dying Light co-op with a buddy of mine. So we just did that on Friday. Uh, going through Assassin's Creed right now. First episode of Assassin's Creed 3. We're also... I have a racing game always in the loop. So we're doing Hot Wheels Unleashed right now, which is actually pretty cool. Did our first episode last week. And then I'm doing God of War uh, 2018 for the very first time. As well, and then I throw in some multiplayer like Call of Duty, free for all, Warzone stuff uh, every once in a while too. So that's what you'll find on this specific channel. I do have two other uh, channels on YouTube that I run as well for reactions, and very very soon I'll be doing dash cam stuff as well, which is really super exciting. That's uh, 24th. I'm getting my dash cam installed on the car, so that's gonna be fun too. All right, let's keep talking to our boy here. Well, you do that. Oh, hold on. Got to bring up the world map. Okay. Find a general store. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Are we, like, zoomed super far out here? We are. So, yeah, we got to find an eagle tower. Yo, he just leave me to find a general store on my own? That guy's a dick. Markets. Get these out of the way. Number of public markets in the colonies mean you could get supplies easily. Of course, paying for goods is another matter of currency. It was incredibly complex. You paid in English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese coins. Wampum. Well, I think Wampum that would be um, uh, indigenous, right? New Jersey, New Jersey, and New York had their own bills. Magic beans, laundromat coins. Dude, did they have crypto? It sounds like they should have crypto back in the 1700s. I'm telling you. We simplified everything for you down in the Animus. While some markets sold a variety of goods, like Fenwil Hall in Boston, others were more specialized. 
New York's caught uh, Quentin's slip was made in the fish market. Well, if you're in the market for African slaves, Peck's slip was the place to go. Yes, slavery was legal at the time, though it was less common in Boston than New York. It had the largest slave population in the North. Don't be surprised to see European servants for sale either. Some were sold for a fixed number of years to pay back their paths to the New World. Much better deal than the slaves were offered. Yikes. Pretty late where you're at? You got school? Hey, thanks for popping in. I appreciate the follow. I look forward to seeing you on future streams. All right, man? Thanks so much for being here. Have a wonderful day at school. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, dude. Ah, oh, man. Always cool to meet new people, man. I love it. Love it. <laughs> Little kids are looking for money. I like that as an addition. It's not like the beggars anymore. It's like these kids Get fucking around. What the hell? Just ran into that dude? Is that Ben Franklin? No way. Did he knock, knock Ben Franklin over? Benjamin Franklin. The renowned inventor, diplomat, and one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Translation, he was a rock star of the age. Ben Franklin was born in Boston in 1706, the tenth son of a soap maker. Ten sons, I guess his parents couldn't afford a television. And also, there was no television. Yeah, that joke fell short, Sean. Try again. <coughs> yeah, working for his brother in 1718 as an apprentice printer. However, the relationship was rocky, particularly after the elder Franklin found out that young Benjamin had been writing for the paper under a pseudonym, Silence Do Good, <laughs> and writing an extremely popular column at that. Human nature being what it is, the fact that the column was popular was probably the bigger problem. Benjamin ran away in 1723 and headed for Philadelphia, where he continued his career in printing and writing, eventually buying the Pennsylvania Gazette. The business, I mean, not just a copy, that would have been one of his lesser achievements. He stayed in Philadelphia for most of his life, that is when he wasn't making extended trips to Europe. Franklin had a talent for persuasion that made him an ideal diplomat. In 1757, he went to London to represent Pennsylvania in an ongoing legal battle with the Penn family. Hold up. Was Pennsylvania named after the Penn family? This is a Canadian guy here, by the way. So forgive me. I know some of US history, okay? But that just hit me like a ton of bricks. It was the first of several extended political trips to Britain. He would act as the state representative for Massachusetts, Georgia, and New Jersey as well as. In fact, Franklin was in Europe for most of the revolution. <laughs> So he was in the colonies to help with the writing of the Declaration of Independence. Good timing. Very good timing. Franklin was a vocal opponent of British impositions on the colonies, like the Stamp Act. And although he fought for the rights of colonists as British citizens, he eventually became convinced, like many of the Founding Fathers, that independence was the only real solution. Unfortunately, Franklin's change of heart made him clash with his son, William, who served as the royal governor of New Jersey. Ugh, that would have been awkward. William remained an active loyalist. Father and son never spoke again. That's kind of sad, actually. When he wasn't founding a new nation and destroying his family in the process, Franklin was a scientist inventing things like bifocals and more efficient wood stoves when he wasn't mapping the Gulf Stream and discovering how electricity worked. What have you done today? Made yourself a microwave meal and sat about in your underwear. Oh, well done, you. He was also quite the lady killer. Jesus. This guy carrying on several friendships with women while he was in Europe. The records don't say exactly what they saw in him, certainly not his looks. Apparently, he was called Big Ben Franklin for a reason. Maybe women like a man who's intelligent. If that was true. I wouldn't be here. I'd be in Portugal surrounded by them. And you'd be looking at a blank screen. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs> Yo, did they knock over Ben Franklin? Is that, is that him? Uh oh, that is him. Damn Spriggs, this accursed city will be the death of me. You seem troubled, friend. That's because I am. Greatly so, in fact. Okay. What's happened? I was robbed. The old Balkan file. Though I've managed to restore what's mine, I fear it's ruined. You mean the book? This is no ordinary book. It's an almanac. The first I ever wrote. <clears throat> Benjamin Franklin, pleased to meet you. Haytham Kenway. You must be new to Boston. Why do you say that? You're still possessed of virtue. 
to ah. stop and help an old lout like myself. I... I don't mean to impose, but you seem a spry fellow. <laughs> Should you happen to find my missing pages, I'll reward you. Ooh. Look, I'm not sure if I... It's all right, all right. If you have the time, hurrah. If not, no harm done. The thing is useless in its current state anyway. But should you nice little side quest right at the beginning here. It, search for his missing pages. I love it. Because there. there's no more Animus things to collect, so that's good. Nice way to introduce oh. Ben Franklin. That was interesting. That was interesting. All right. General Store. Hello. Who's this? Got my email, bro? Who's this? Can I talk to you? Oh, it's a mission. What's this? Committees of correspondence. Oh, my word. Since the American Revolution happened in the dark days before there was an internet, and even before telephones, organizing colonial opposition to the British was a little tricky. That would be tough, man. How they did that shit was amazing. It blows my mind. I don't want to make you cry, but these clowns in the dial-up. Okay, Sean, stop it. It's 1700. Shut the fuck up. The solution was to send out riders bearing letters to inform colonists in other areas what was going on. These became known as committees of correspondence. Correspondence being a fancy name for letters. Okay, we're not dumb, Sean. Fuck you. Actually, I'm amazed you can even read this far. Fuck you, Sean. Now he's turning on the asshole. The funny is gone. The asshole is here. Okay. Sam Adams created one of the first communities of correspondence in Boston in 1772 in particular. He wanted to keep people outside of Boston informed about his town meetings. So the governor couldn't invite only his friends to meetings. That would be less a meeting, more a dinner party. Yes. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Adams' committee worked so well that everyone started doing it. Eventually, all of the colonies had their own committees, focused on presenting a united front against British-imposed taxes and supporting boycotts of British goods. Really, Adams should be a patent to the idea. Could have made a fortune. Yes. Sam Adams. Ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, locations. Boston. A bunch of grapes. Holy shit, we have a lot of reading to do, guys. Oh my god. Like I said, if history was taught through a video game, I would have aced everything. Huh. <sighs> okay. This was one of the meeting places of the Sons of Liberty. Not to be confused with Metal Gear, so, uh, Metal, uh, blah, blah. Not to be confused with Metal Gear Solid 2. Okay. The attraction of this particular tavern may have been the library, which included many anti-British books. Or it might have been its reputation as the finest punch house in Boston. Or it might even have been its location, which is right down the street from the old state house, where the legislature met. And where the Boston Massacre occurred. Or it might have been Darts Night. Who knows? I would love to use the fact that the Patriots met in taverns to imply all kinds of things about them. I should point out that taverns were places to do business as well as drink. That alcohol was viewed as more or less a cure for all ills. Cheers. You're waiting for a punchline, but that's actually true. Those are the kind of doctor's orders I crave. <laughs> okay. Cool. Here's our general store. I guess we started a mission side quest that we didn't know about. All good. Well, a buy a sword and a pistol. Yes. Uh, we have 2,800 pounds. What did you say to me? A flintlock pistol is $2,000. Fuck off. Yeah, I'll take the sword. Thank you. Okay, we still have enough to buy both. Okay, that's good. I mean, like, we're broke as fuck now, but hey, whatever. We're armed, so, you know, fuck around and find out, guys. Come see us. <laughs> you sell anything? No. Okay. It was worth a shot, right? The green dragon on horseback. Ooh, let's ride a horse, shall we? We ride for the Green Dragon Tavern. Ooh, the, the Green Dragon. Eccentric, 
but the rooms are spacious <coughs> and they Hold on. Van Will. How do you pronounce that? Van you will? Van Will? Don't let the French <laughs> spelling confuse you. Fuck off, these guys are calling me out. The name of this building is pretty <laughs> Bruh. The game like straight up called me out. They knew a dude like me would be tripping over his shit. Fuck you, <laughs> game. Pronounce Fanuel or Fanel. Fanuel. Fanuel. Okay. Getting it wrong is a good way to indicate you're not from around here. Really? Vancouver, Canada? Eh. It's also a great way of proving you're not French, which in my experience is a boon. <laughs> also, if you want to pass as a local, you should take a good look at the weather vane. Boston landmark. Legend has it that in the War of 1812, suspected spies were asked what was on top of Fanuel Hall. Only a true local would be able to say it was a grasshopper. That'd be a tough one. The building was named after Peter Fanuel, the local merchant who paid to build it. It meant as a place for local farmers to sell their goods so their carts would stop crowding the streets and also so you didn't have to walk near farmers. Okay, What's wrong with farmers? Probably smelled bad back in the day. However, it's the meeting hall on the second floor which gives the building its nickname, the Cradle of Liberty. That's rather ostentatious and dare say I American as a nickname, but it's not inaccurate. People met here to protest the Stamp Act. The first anti-tea tax meetings were also held here. Anti-British meetings occasionally drew crowds so large the building couldn't even hold them all, at which point they all went to the Old South meeting hall. During the Siege of Boston, the meeting hall here was made over into a theater. Since plays of any kind were banned in Boston under ordinary circumstances, and I think should still be a law, actually. Uh, yet another example of British loyalists sticking it to the rebels. What a time, man. I can't imagine what it would have been like to have been alive at that time. Like, I can't imagine. That'd be crazy. Have you been told why it is I've come to Boston? No. Master Birch said I should know only as much as you saw fit to share. He sent me a list of names and bade me ensure you could find them. That's and have great. you had any luck with that? Hi. William Johnson waits for us at the Green Dragon. How nice. well do you know him? Not well, but he saw the order's mark and did not hesitate to come. Prove yourself loyal to our cause, and you may yet know our plans as well. I should like nothing more, sir. Yeah, prove your loyalty. All right. So he's basically said to us, hey, listen, I want to study under the assassins here. So help me out. And Kenway's basically said, hey, prove yourself and maybe we'll start letting you listen in on some stuff. Basically, that's what's up. Okay. Interesting how there'd be a pub named Green Dragon in 1700s Boston. Hold up. The tavern is sometimes called the headquarters of the revolution, though I imagine when it is, they pronounce it headquarters of the revolution. Because overthrowing the government in a pub is thirsty work. It is a popular place for people like Paul Revere, Sam Abbs, to sit with their friends and plot. Up until 1754, the tavern was owned by William Douglas. When he died, his property was left to his daughter, Catherine Kerr, and his nephew, Cornelius Douglas. Cornelius! They divided the inheritance equally and it seems got along famously. The Freemasons bought the tavern in 1766 and renamed it the Green, the Freemasons Arms, pardon me, which didn't actually stick because the sign above the door was still a green dragon. Freemasons, the secret society everyone knows about. <laughs> Let's get a pub where we can meet in complete secret and no one will ever know. Brilliant. What shall we call it? The Freemasons Arms. Legend has it that Paul Revere's ride was planned here, but that's unlikely. By 1774, Revere had been warned that the British were listening in on his meetings and had therefore stopped making super secret plans in public where anyone could hear them. Someone tell the Masons, you know where to find them. <laughs> I love the sarcasm, I really do. Wait, what? Oh, we're here. Calm down, horsey. Oh, get off. New weapons are available in shops? Cool. Let's just go say hello, shall we?
You lying, cheating, no good son of a bitch. Perhaps we've come at a bad time. Oh, don't be foolish, dearies. Please, sit. Fancy something to eat? A drink, perhaps? Or is it a bed you require? We've already Whoa. let rooms here. Whoa. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> of course. Masters Lee and Kenway, uh, was it? Uh, I'll have your bags brought up. <laughs> that couple, though. <coughs> Do you require anything further? Only privacy. Privacy. Not privacy. Privacy. It all depends how you say it, my good man. Yeah. Oh, hello, sir. Let's have a chat, shall we? Sir, William Johnson. A pleasure. A good lad, if a bit earnest. I'm told you're putting together an expedition. We believe there's a precursor site in the region. I require your knowledge of the land and its people to find it. Sadly, my research has been stolen. Without it, I'm of no use to you. What? Then we'll find it. Do you have any leads? My associate, Thomas Hickey, has been making the rounds. He's quite good at loosening tongues. Well, tell me where I can find him. I'll see if I can't speed things up. We've heard rumors of bandits operating from a compound southwest of here. Bandits? You'll likely find him there. Charles? Sir. We'd best be off. Of course. Ha. Huh. We'd best be off now. All right, let's uh, learn about William Johnson. William Johnson was a land speculator and Britain's principal treaty negotiator with the indigenous peoples in the northern part of the colonies, particularly the Iroquois. Johnson was born in Ireland, but moved to the colonies in 1738 to look after his uncle's property on the Mohawk River. However, it wasn't long before Johnson branched out into the business for himself, acquiring property on the opposite side of the river and setting up a sawmill and trading post, which he named Mount Johnson. Benders, good to see you, buddy. Which to me always sounds like a mating instructions from a caveman. <laughs> Mount Johnson. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. <laughs> in 1743, he moved to an even larger parcel of land, which he named Fort Johnson. He may have been an excellent businessman, but it's possible he lacked an imagination. Johnson befriended the indigenous peoples of the area, particularly the Kenyan Kaka. Oh my god, I am butchering the fuck out of that. Whose language he learned. His respect for their customs helped him rise to promise as liaison between the Iroquois people and the British government. Johnson was named Superintendent of Indian Affairs in 1756. As a contact who knows the lands and his people, he's probably the best you'll find. Nice. Good to know. How you doing, Benders? Hope your weekend went well, brother. All right. Oh, hold up, there's someone else there. Who was that? Thomas Hickey? What? Who are you? Thomas Hickey was an Irish-born member of the British Army. Arrived in Boston in 1752, but it wasn't long before he was assigned to William Johnson's personal guard, apparently at Johnson's request. Possibly because the families were connected in Ireland, or maybe he found the name Hickey funny. The record isn't clear. Hickey served under Johnson during the French and Indian War, but then he left the army after being written up several times for disorderly conduct. After 1760, Hickey disappears from the historical record for several years. I do, however, have several mentions in William Johnson's household accounts of payments made to a TH. It's possible Hickey was working for him as a spy. If so, he should really have developed some tougher codes to crack. Dude, it was the 1700s. Sean, fuck, get off their ass. You gonna invade can of steel maple syrup? You don't have to invade. Just come up here and buy some from a store, bro. It's that easy. Done. No violence. No death, just money exchanging hands and the good maple syrupness down your throat. That sounded weird, didn't it? Ha! Ah! All right. Let's follow Mr. Lee. And this whole time, like, nothing has been mentioned about our person. Like, this is all... Anyway, we're in the Animus. So, interesting. But money... Ah, uh, come on, man. With, the, like, a paper route, you can get money to buy maple syrup. It's, it's probably imported down there. 
You can get some down there. All right, there's some. There's a cornfield right there. Hello. What's up, buddy? Johnson's errand. Socks? <laughs> Yo, don't buy it for me. I don't sell maple syrup. <laughs> I go to a Thomas store. Hickey? Who's asking? Haytham Kenway. Is that supposed to mean something? Now show some respect, boy. Peace, Charles. William Johnson sent us in the hopes we might expedite your search. Don't need no expediting. Don't need none of your fancy London speak, neither. I found the men that done the theft. Then why are you just lazing around? Oof. Figuring out how to deal with those varlets. I have an idea. Well, let's hear it. I'll kill the lookout. Take up a position behind the guards. Uh, you two, approach from the front. When I open fire on the group, you charge in. We'll have the element of surprise on our side. Half will fall before they've even realized what's happened. Yep, I like it. Ooh, kill it. Uh, I will shoot. Get into position. But wait for me to take the first shot. That's pretty loud. Let me kill 10 of those dudes? Shit. Hey, loot. Okay, good. We can loot. The icons look so much cleaner. So much cleaner. Can I hide in these bushes? Yeah, we can. Okay. We get over there. This is tough. I'm trying to block, man. I'm trying to block. Yo, there's so many here. I gotta fight. Fuck. I'm not doing this. Woo! Let's go. Oh, and the slow mo, too. I couldn't even kill 10 dudes with a gun. Four. Name's Mike Rush. Yeah? Who do you have my crush on? Back. Fall back! We'll be safe inside! What now? We can blow the door with those. Go on, shoot them. Fuck yeah, I will. You said blow up? Red barrels? I'm down, man. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know where he went. The amount of reload time is crazy. On with the show, then. Yo, I'm gonna. Okay, we got eight more to shoot. I'm gonna see if we can do that. What's the fuck around? Find out, boys. Say wasn't so safe inside after all. Hold on. Ooh, that's a nice looking look chest. Save your looting for after we found Johnson's research. Yes, master. <sighs> okay. Isn't that what I'm trying to get though? Dude, what? Like rushes you. <laughs> Lay down your weapons uh -oh. and I'll consider letting you live. I make you the same offer. We've no quarrel. I only wish to return this chest to its rightful owner. Nothing rightful about Mr. Johnson. I won't ask again. Woo! Agreed. Oh, shit. Showdown. Get him. Reload. Reload. 
Dude, fuck off. Yo. Oh, I couldn't kill him. Your kind has no need for books and maps. Who put you up to this? Never seen a person. It's always been dead drops and letters. But they always pay, so we do the jobs. Well, those days are done. Tell your masters I said as much. Oh. Let you live, brother. Who should I say you are? You don't. They'll know. <laughs> Look at all our dudes there, man. We all me mugging. This one's got some shot on him. You might want to be grabbing it on account of your pistol being parched. Hey, how do you know my pistol's parched? Don't tell me how my Shame. pistol is. Back to the green dragon, then. I need a drink. There we go. Are they in a fight Don't already? Let go of the chest, Charles. We'll take care of this rebel. Sir. <laughs> Bitch. Look at those badges. Damn it. How am I supposed to kill these dudes? Them bodies is sure to have loot on them. Would be a shame to let it all go to waste. Are you mad? In case you've forgotten, we're in the midst of something. Aw, why's you always gotta go and spoil the sport? Spoil the sport? You wanna fight, dude? Yeah, he does. No, don't run away. Really? Shoot this motherfucker. I gotta shoot ten of them. Shit. I'm running. I'm running. Damn it, can't wait. Reload. I'm still reloading. God damn, this is so slow. I'm reloading! Oh my god, this is horrible. I need three more. I don't know if I can get them all, though. You out of here? Alright, man, just have a great night, dude. Thanks for popping in, buddy. Appreciate ya. Fools with knives. They ain't so tough. It's not the scoundrels I'm concerned with. Yeah, you gotta kill two more, I think, with the pistol. Whew. Come on, give me two more guys to shoot, man. Two more to, like, let's go. I'm here for it. Reloading yet? Fuck off. Really? I need one more. One more. Let me reload my shit. There we go, baby. Let's go. Well, what happened? What I do? What I do? Come on. The controls a little bit different. I gotta remember that. 
we got our, our first thing going here. Like that, huh? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Bitch. What the fuck happened to this dude? <laughs> Bitches. Dude, oh my god, that was sick. Let's go. Hold on, let me reload first. Mr. Johnson's gonna need to double my pay after all this if mm -hmm. he expects me to keep at his side. <coughs> He's still drinking. You are? My thanks, Master Kenway. No. Tell me what it is you need. The images on this amulet, are they familiar to you? Perhaps one of the tribes has shown you something similar. It appears Kanyan Gahaga in origin. Can you trace it to a specific location? I need to know where it came from. With my research returned, perhaps. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, see what you can do, buddy. Thomas! Well... Rent yourself a room. And a bath as well. <laughs> I suspect we'll be here for a while. You doing some work for me, boy. Johnson Johnson's errand, okay. Nailed it all, baby. We're not gonna do that for every mission in the game though. We're not. Okay. Quick pause here, guys. Quick uh, drink refill and bathroom bake, and then uh, we're gonna do a couple more things here before we wrap up for the night. All right, hang tight, we'll be back in a minute. All righty, we are back. Let's keep it going, shall we? What's the B over here? Not in this room. We'll look at the B first before I look at the exclamation mark. And there's people to talk to here, of course. You gotta talk to people, right? How's it going, buddy? Oh, play game. No, 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 no. Oh, he's upstairs. Shit, my bad. It's annoying I can't walk fast up here, though. You just hang out on the stairs drinking. <laughs> Tell me about yourself, William. What's to tell? I was born in Ireland to Catholic parents, which I learned early in life severely limited my opportunities. So I converted to Protestantism and journeyed here at the behest of my uncle. But I fear my uncle Peter was not the swiftest of men. He sought to open trade with the Kanyan Gahaga, but chose to build his settlement away from the trade routes instead of on them. I tried to reason with the man, but... <sighs> As I said, not the swiftest. So, I took what little money I'd earned and bought my own little plot of land. I built a home, a farm, a store, and a mill. Wow. Humble beginnings, but well situated. Yeah. Which made all the difference. So this is how you came to know the Mohawk. Location's everything. Indeed. And it has proved a valuable relationship. But still no mention from your contacts of the precursor site. No hidden temple or ancient constructs? <coughs> yes and no. Which is to say, they had their fair share of sacred sites. Earthen moons, forest clearings, hidden caves. 
but nothing matching what you describe. Mm. No strange metals, no odd blows. Mm. It is well hidden. Even to them, it seems. But cheer up, my friend. You'll have your precursor treasure. I swear it. To cheer our up. success, then. And soon. We're talking. We're hold up. Hold this dude. This dude. Any news? Whispers of things. Nothing solid at the moment. I know you're looking for word of anything out of the ordinary. Dealing with temples and spirits and ancient times and whatnot. But so far, can't say my boys have heard much. No trinkets or artifacts being moved through your shadow market. Nothing new. Couple of ill-gotten weapons, some jewelry likely lifted from a living thing. But you said from a living thing. Glows and ums and strange sights, right? And I ain't heard nothing about that. Keep at it. Oh, I will. You done me a great service, Mister. Yes, I did. And I fully intend to repay my debt. Out of boy. Fold, if it pleases. Thank you, Thomas. Recognize, Place man. To sleep and meal to eat is thanks enough. Don't you worry. I'll get you sorted soon. Yeah, man. People recognize a favor for a favor. And, like, you you do me well. I do you well. No no homo. Like, you take care of people. People take care of you. Right? Oh. I talk to him again? Should not be much longer. Okay, we already talked to him. Let's go talk to the bee. The bee bee bee. Yeah, they took the NPCs, like, to a whole other level, man. They had interior areas. Like, it's crazy. There's a page, a paper. I'm not chasing that right now. There's a bee somewhere. In my map when I was inside here, where's the bee at? I guess that means the... Uh... Okay, can we get the Allmire page? I'll try again. I promise. I promise. I'll try. I'll do my best, man. I'll do what I can. Ah, oh, fuck, it's gone. Okay, it's doing me. Sir, do you want to fuck around and find out? Oh, shit, there's like 10 of you. Okay, have a good day, sir. <laughs> <coughs> okay, sir. You have a great day now. I ain't fucking around with that. I'm not... I just started. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Whew. Let's just do the mission, shall we? Next on the list. Yep. <clears throat> oh, no, I got hiccups. Oh no. Evening, gentlemen. Oh god. <laughs> Coming. Oh, peace, Charles. He'll grow in you. Oi! Catherine, you fussock! Get back here! Daddy needs a drink. <laughs> yeah. How fair's the search? Maths and maps are not cutting it. Oh no, they have few local contacts. We'll need to earn their trust before they'll share what they know. <sighs> Oh, I have an idea on how we might be affecting that. There's Yo. a man who's taken to his slave. That's a married girl, man. Him she married. Us. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do you know where they're being held? Afraid not. Get, get out of her Benjamin tits, Church man. Will. He's a finder and a fixer. He's also on your list. And there I was wondering whom I might solicit next. Well uh. done. Is he still going after the boobs? Okay, you know what? I'm glad we... Is he still... Okay, okay, we're clear. We're clear. Whew. When I know something, you'll know something. All right, all right, all right. Let's fucking go. I mean, out of fairness, she, she didn't really have too much to motorboat. I ain't gonna lie. But hey, she seemed to have a good time. He had a good time. Now, 
I will always say consent comes first, okay? Even if we're playing around and we're like laughing about sex stuff, consent comes first, but she looked like she's into it. She didn't say no. If she said no, whole other story. So it's like, dude, you might want to question the ladies you're trying to, like, I don't know. Trying to motorboat a rowboat, my man. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah, okay. Let's just leave it at that. Hello, sir. We have people in red. That's the... Okay, so the English basically are red negative people. Got it. Church residents. The house was built in 1707 by a prominent local merchant named Robert Kellef. Benjamin Church bought it from his heirs to use as a Boston residence. Church's practice is on Newberry Street, a fairly short walk away, so the house was in an ideal location. It's also a nice part of town. Even in colonial Boston, two-story houses with fenced-in gardens. Don't come cheap. They didn't even get cable. Ha <laughs> ha! Actually, given the location, it seems that Church's practice was doing very well indeed. That or he had another source of revenue. Yeah. Okay, let's find out. What we doing, brother? Surgeon. <clears throat> knock, knock. Oh. Uh oh. Wonderful. Oh, shit. Our boy is uh, doing some work, sir. Huh? <laughs> uh, okay, let's go with it. <laughs> Shit. <coughs> Seems like we're not the only ones looking for Mr. Church. Damn it, he could be anywhere. What do we do? We find him. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So what he looks like. Come. We cut his face. I'll show you how. All right. Let's eavesdrop, shall we? They had eavesdrop mission. Hold on, hold on. What was this? They had eavesdrop missions back in Assassin's Creed One, the original, which is actually really cool that they brought it back for Assassin's Creed Three. I like it. It's cool. Task controls, HUD. Is there anything new here? That's cool, they brought eavesdropping missions back. It really is. There will be a meeting of the city's advocates. Not our business to meddle. Even if we've the best of intentions. But if you could have seen it, they were surely drunk carrying on like that and do it's hard to hear. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Sure. Okay. We're blending. We're blending. We're still kind of sus. I mean, we're still kind of sus. I'm in the area, bro. Oh, it's right there. Okay, fine, fine. There's a pig! There's a fucking pig just walking down the street! Really? They stumbled off to the northeast. No doubt in search of a tavern or some other place of ill repute. Okay. Start questioning those on the street. I'm headed for higher ground. Okay. 
Yes, let's uh, climb, shall we? There's a fucking pig just chilling out, walking down the street, man. Like, he doesn't give a fuck. Let's have a little yeet, 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 yeet. I can't imagine the amount, like, the developers put all these things in play to really be able to support parkour, like, wherever someone's coming from. All these little bars and shit. Like, it was impressive, man. It really was. Hold up. And you could go through trees, almost. Like, it was crazy. Actually, you could go through trees. That was a big... Uh, change in this uh, where trees were a big thing especially when you're uh, when we turn to Connor hold up what's this another wooden church this time with a bell of the steeple Samuel Adams father also named Samuel Adams oh Sad Adams jr. okay one of the founding members I'm surprised it wasn't tore down for firewood during the siege but I guess its members just hadn't angered the British enough for that Conveniently named so you won't mistake it for the Old South Beating House. Haha! <laughs> Where all the important events happen. Simple as best. I'm describing the aiming system, not describing you. Oh! Ho, ho. Zing! Guy's an asshole. Let's synchronize, shall we? It's interesting, it's almost like the game was teaching people like how to play the game again for the first time. But there was some differences. So it's like, okay. Like, I already knew how to synchronize. Give me to a highest point, then we get, then we'll, like, get more map knowledge. But hey, you know what? It's a new world, right? This is a very thin steeple. Are we stepping on this? Holy shit, we are. Let's, let's do it. Look how straight we are, man. What a boss! Holy shit! Time to take a listen. With luck, one of those people knows what became of Benjamin. Big boy jump! Alright. Our map. Can I go map straight? It's a, ah, map is select. Map is select. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. Hold up. No, no, no. I just want to move my shit around. What's all this shit? Zoom. <coughs> okay. Let's eavesdrop some more, shall we? Like the amount of research they must have done to create, recreate these towns is crazy. I've asked the criers, but they all plead ignorance. Look at that! They're lying! Aye. What can I do? Threats light off them and I'll not deign to grovel. Actions speak louder than words, my friend. Arrest one and put him in stocks. See if he's so glib then. To do so without cause will set them singing songs about us. Last thing the city needs is town criers. I wish the volume was loud on this. To me, it's like pretty low. The crime is done. The killer's gone. Those who know won't share their secrets. If the city wishes to harbor scoundrels, let them pay the price for it. Ooh. Don't mind me, boys. All right, where are we going now? Ooh, we have more. Oh, shit. Hold up, though. Yo, for those who've... <laughs> if you've done any Assassin's Creed with me, man, you know I'm all about the viewpoints, man. I got some OCD around that shit. Let's go right now. Right now. Let's fucking do it. I will walk through Boston, man. I will find the waypoints. Let's go. The more I fucking have a map, the more I can do some shit. It sounds weird. That's a whole oh, piggy. Piggy. Oh, 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 can I pet you? I really want to pet him. Can I pet him? He deserves a pet. 
He's gonna be baking soon, man. He deserves some scratches behind the ears or some shit. Oh, man, that hurts my heart. I'll still eat it, though. I ain't gonna lie. Don't put me around no... Don't, don't, don't put me around no vegans, okay? It will not be a friendly conversation. I'm, I'm fine with people who are vegan. I'm totally fine with vegan people. And vegetarians, all that shit. I support their personal opinions and views. But I'm gonna eat me some bacon. Sorry, I just I'm, I'm just gonna do it. I, I'm, and I agree. There's a lot of issues around animal cruelty and stuff like that that needs to be addressed and fixed and improved. Absolutely. But I, give me a fucking good medium steak or a fuck some good bacon. Like I don't, bruh, man. I can't not. I can't. Like, dude, I'm I'm working hard to hold my household together and shit. The least I can do being at the top of the food train is have a fucking, like, bacon breakfast, man. Like, seriously. That's, not, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But I will never shit on people for choosing to be vegan or choosing to be vegetarian. Never. Ever. I will never, never, ever be mad at people for choosing that. That's their choice. They deserve it. Alright, we got another viewpoint, baby. Let's go. What else is here? Where else can we fucking find? I'm going... Fuck off, dude. Really? Hello. Uh, map? Yeah, please. What the fuck? Like, what the fuck, dude? I'm gonna go to Adam's Bay. Give me the map! Okay, this is one thing that's fucking annoying. Yeah, I'm already in the map. Like, it... <sighs> Look, if I go up... Okay, yeah, we can do all that shit. So I have to go to map, and then over here... I can still do that shit. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Still fucking, I gotta get used to it. It's, they upgraded shit. They really did. They changed shit from what we were used to. So it was a matter of time before we fucking figured shit out. Yo, is this the one where we can like go through these people's houses? Shit. Hold up. I wanna go through your house, lady. Yeah. Where'd she go? Yeah, we can go right through people's houses and shit. See, that was a new thing. That was really cool. They like little warp zones. Like Super Mario Bros. had nothing on this shit. Look at the fucking parkour. Yeah. Yeet. Okay, we don't have the, the hook. So. I thought it was. Oh, ouch. I was gonna hit the tree first. My bad. Yeah, we don't have any meds, so I gotta be careful. Get down, madman! Yes! That's all good, man. It's over, it's over, it's over. No one knows, no one knows. Never mind, you're back! I knew you couldn't you couldn't say no to me, Benders. I'm here. Actually, I'm not that cocky. I'm not that arrogant, man. I appreciate you being here, brother. Thank you. I mean, I, 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 you were probably going to bed for some reason, so I'm sorry I'm keeping you up. No, it's not me. You know what? No. That's not me keeping you up. Something else is keeping you up, but at least I'm... You know what? I'm glad I'm here for you, man. I'm glad I'm here for you. <laughs> we're going to climb this cathedral for you. This is Bender's Tower right here. Let's go. You're pooped. So why are you awake, man? Take some melatonin and like have a rest. I mean, I'm glad you're here because it helps my stats and shit. But if you're tired, I like I, I I want what's best for you. And where Kenway is, he's like he's there for you, man. Look, he's he's presenting for you, bro. <laughs> All right, where do we jump? Where's the hey? There it is. Ye. Bye. I'm eating. So hold up. So what do you have to eat before sleep? Like, if you're super hungry, then like, yeah, grab an apple or something, man. Fill that up enough where you can sleep. Because apparently eating after like eight o'clock or something is bad for you, which is, I, I gotta stop that. I eat at late at night too much. All right, set this one up right here.
You know, fail a single eavesdrop? I don't know about that. I'm about to fail some. Yeet! Hello, puppy. <coughs> See, they added M uh, uh, dogs and animals to NPCs. We've had pigs, we've had dogs. Like, they added a lot of shit to this game, man. Tenzin! What the fuck? Dude, it's almost midnight here. You're like, it's like, they're almost 3 a.m. for you. What are you doing here, bro? <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you're here, but what the fuck? <laughs> it's our first episode of Assassin's Creed 3, man. We're having a good time. Hope you're doing all right, brother. <laughs> Yeet. And we got some goats. Can I pet the goats? I want to pet the goats. Let me pet the goats. Ah, shit. Fuck off. Okay, fine. We'll pet your goats. Treat him like shit anyway. I give him a good experience. Oh, hello, guys. How you doing? Can I walk through you? No? You know what? I'm not going to fuck with that. No, no, no. You guys have a great day. I'm going to go this way. Apparently, that's a very important part to guard, and they have to guard it, so I'm just going to go this way. Bed to eat after sunset. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, what's this? Printer shop. Printing presses were originally brought to America to print religious texts, but by the time of the Revolutionary War, they were also used for things like newspapers, pamphlets, and broadsheets. Think of it as a colonial internet, but the same speed as dial-up. Mm. Unlike the word of mouth, newspaper articles can spread news of events from colony to colony quickly and without any loss of information. Doesn't mean it was unbiased. Far from it. Presses were commonly used to print propaganda. Every newspaper had its slant. Thank goodness that doesn't happen nowadays. <laughs> the comedy on that comment. Anyway, part of what made Boston Massacre such a turning point were reprints of Paul Revere's woodcut. It showed organized British soldiers in full formation firing point blank at an innocent crowd. A shocking image which enraged the people and fueled their hatred of the British. Completely made up, of course, but what did that matter? Public is there to be manipulated. Actually, I bet you could use these places to print some propaganda of your own. The souls are getting too unfriendly. A little reminder you're a hero of the people might help. Okay. So this is before 5 p.m. Facts. But the thing is, Ben, uh, Paul, Ben, just hold up. I forget. Are you Central Time or Eastern Time? I know Tenzin is Eastern Time. He's in New, he's in New York. So he's three hours behind me. And I'm, in, I'm Pacific Time, so... Hold up. Let's climb. This thing is really bugging me. I really don't want to admit. Okay, well, don't admit it then. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you do, then go ahead. This is a non This is a safe place. Well, for me, anyway, uh, I can't talk about other people who are in the chat who are lurking, but for me, like, I don't judge, bro. I really don't. Oh, I should be able to jump in the trees, though. All right. There's the, the cathedral tower right there. Hello? Don't look at me, bro. This ain't like fucking Italian times. Let me go on your roof. Who cares if I'm on your roof? Yeet. There we go. Time to climb. Come on. Let's go back to our vacation. Big side. Here we go again. Gotta help me, kind of feeling. Yes. Yes. Yes, dude. I got. I went back on. I uh, went back to work on Wednesday. And uh, it was a short week, and on the first day, I'm like, how come it's not Friday yet? So, yeah, it was like that. And tomorrow is going to be very, very rough. I have a lot of stuff on the go tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, part of it is that everyone is coming back to work, right? So, some people expect, oh, your project should be done right now, immediately. I'm like, bro. I haven't talked to you once, and you expect the project to be ready to go? Fuck you. 
Like, I have one guy. He was like, I reached out to him because uh, I told him on the like back in December. I'm like, hey, listen, it's vacation time. I'll talk to you at the very beginning of, of January. And he's like, cool. So I talked to him in January. He's like, I thought you knew all of the stuff I needed. I'm like, I never talked to you in my life, buddy. What the fuck? So I talked to him the other day on like Friday and I got his information. I got to set up his stuff and I'm in, I'm on site this week. It's going to be like crazy, man. It felt like this is years. What are you doing, Bender? Shit. What the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun, though. Kenway is uh, climbing a tower here, though, so. Synchronize. Bitches. Big boy jump. All right, let's see you drop over here. I asked if I could help, and they waved me away. Insisted it was all under control. How awful. Did they say what had happened? No. Only that it was a trifling matter, and he'd be returned home soon. There was some blood, though. So I wonder if it wasn't more serious than they let on. Okay. Where were they taking him? Towards the hilltop. Ooh. Perhaps there's a doctor at the fort. All right, well, we got one eaves up, done. Better not end again. Wait, what's not gonna end? What, ah, uh, bro. Uh, I can't promise, like, we're going on uh, two, almost three hours now, so I can't promise much. What are they talking about, man? I was doing a deed somewhere. <laughs> Good call, that. Okay, let's get the fuck out. Remain undetected. We're doing all right so far. Mixed emotions. Okay, try to explain, and I hope I will understand. Church in no time, just as I said we would. If I might ask, sir. Where did you learn to do all this? It is a requirement when you are raised in the manner that I was. Yes. Perception is fundamental to the order. It guides the feet when running and climbing, informs the hands when striking and fighting. But most important, it transforms the senses, and we begin to know the world. I really play with friends, but this one friend has just been too good. Too good. Yo, it's always fun when you have a good person to play with. You need to party out with someone, it's always good, but if, So, that's good, man. My coworkers be a jackass. Always being Valentine gift for getting fired? No. No, there's no... I don't have coworkers really too much. There's people in my company, but they're not in my employ. Uh, Tenza. I work with a lot of very knowledgeable and skilled people, so I'm actually very happy about that. It's the customers that I work with. So, uh, when I work as, I guess, my department or my knowledge or my specialty is one, a part of a group. So, I work with an IT company. My product that I specialize in is an IT product. It's voice over IP phones, right? So, it's taking landline phones, putting them over voice over IP so that the cost goes down compared to, you know, typical landline phones. Right, and then be able to program, train people, uh, implement the project to uh, move people from the old legacy systems to the new one. This isn't people, this is companies, this is businesses, this is organizations, school districts, guys. So, like, I mean, everyone thinks like, oh, it's a phone, it's a phone. Yes, it is a desk phone, you pick it up, you talk to people. But moving, like, for businesses these days, for individual people, okay, this, a cell phone, it, it makes sense. It's like, okay, whatever, for individuals. Businesses and organizations and companies, 
desk phones and, and how their organization handles phone calls is still a very complicated thing because it's the lifeblood of the companies. To this day, in the internet age, they still need phones. So a lot of people are transitioning over to internet phones, voice over IP, voice over internet based protocol phones. And the fact that their phone system has an app that works on their cell phones. I train them on how to use their apps with their phone system. And they have users, people that have been working with phone systems for years. You have Jenny Smith, who has been working at XYZ Accounting Company for 30 years. She is their main receptionist. She knows how to use a desk phone and a sidecar to transfer calls and all that stuff. How do I transition Jenny Smith from a desk phone to a voice over internet protocol phone when she's been doing shit for 30 years? I train her, I help her. I move their whole phone system over so they have no downtime and I train them so they can move forward. It seems like it's a stupid thing and I agree it is kind of because technology is no big deal to me. But you'd be surprised at the people I deal with who have no idea. They're like, oh my God, it's a new phone. System. No, bitch, it's, it's, a, it's a desk phone. It's just plugged into an internet connection. Press hold, transfer, right? And it's on an app. So, my friend, it's not my coworkers and jacket. My coworkers are actually really, really good. Um, it's the customer. Unfortunately, who's like, oh, bruh, I talked to you like five months ago and I thought you knew everything. Like, no, dude, I talked to our IT person who's on site doing a network readiness test. I have no idea how you want your phone calls routed, bro. Like when someone calls this main number, what phones ring? Is there voicemail? Voicemail to email? Is there ring multiple? Is there a call queue? Do you have park locations? Do you have transfer locations? Do you have a paging system? Dude, it goes a million times deeper than that, but he's like, bro, I talked to you once. You should know everything about me and my wife and her fetish. Uh. Like, fuck off, bro. That's the problem. The customer is the problem. My colleague, not the problem. You just play this dude, Jacob. He was great. He disappeared, man. So sad. Hey, man. People come and go. In. You know what? People come and go in your life. You know, there's people who are there for a reason or a season. Right? There's so many good friends I have. I haven't talked to in years, but if I saw them, I would give them a hug. I miss them so much. It just doesn't make sense. They're in my life right now. But they are amazing people. I miss them so much. I love them so much. They were a big part of my life years ago. Um, and they're such great people and they've had kids now. I know they have kids. I've, I've, I have them on my Instagram and it's like, holy shit, man. Good for them. And I haven't talked to them in years really, but if I saw them, I give them a high five, I give them a hug. Uh, I'd buy them a drink. I, I would just, mm. it's, it's not my coworkers. It was the customer in that scenario. A drink here to ride bicycle. Yep, it is. Absolutely. It is. It is so is Tenzin. Go rule. Customers are always right. No, 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 no. Customers are not always right. Here's the key, though. Tenzin. And and, and uh, I'll be honest. I could be wrong in because I'm in a different industry than you are. But what I found in the industry that I've worked on is to when a customer is wrong, completely wrong ridiculously fantabulously wrong the key isn't to say you're wrong man because that will hurt their ego the key is to befriend them and say you know what i see why you feel that way here let me show you how this actually works bring them in they're confident because if you just say yeah you're a fucking dumbass you're fucking wrong that's not how it works yeah they're not gonna even listen to you right but if they're wrong, it's like, hey, yo, that's a cool perspective. Gain their trust and be like, yeah, because there's people that I work with. There's IT people I work with. And the tough part is 
I have to work with IT people who are more knowledgeable in IT than I am, right? I'm not knowledgeable in IT, but the product I help people with uses IT. So a lot of the times I'll talk to IT companies and they're like, yo, we don't like that you're using voice over IP. So I have to say, listen, here's your VLAN saying, here's your whitelist IP addresses. Here's what you gotta do. Well, we don't think that makes sense. I agree with you, sir. And you know what? We want this to work. That's your customer, right? I want to help you look good to your customer. Yeah. So, because Business Connect runs on IT, I've got everything set up for you. Just plug the phones in. Plug them in, baby. Plug them in. And you guys will look so good. Let's do one phone. Okay, let's do one phone. They do one phone. I get them to do one phone. Oh, fuck. It doesn't work. But that's why we only did one phone so that it's not a big deal. We didn't put your numbers over yet. No. So I'm going to work with you. You work with me. Let's get these phones working, baby. Yeah. That way no one's in trouble. You guys look good. I look good. Yeah. So I help them. Make sure these phones work. So when I go in, I plug in their phones, the phones fire up. They work well. Thus they do. Oh, Mr. Customer, this worked great because your IT company did so well. Yeah. I make them friends because at the end of the day, when I plug in phones, my product basically says, listen, these needs, these phones need internet connection, bro. Plug it in. These phones work with a basic internet connection. The problem is a lot of companies and businesses have firewalls, uh, a lot of security on there, a managed routers, managed switches, and they have to have whitelisted IP addresses, static IP addresses, all that shit. So I basically said, listen, dude, they're gonna move to this phone system. I'm here to transition that. I need you to do this. Let me know how I can make you look good. Otherwise, we're taking over this shit because I'm part of an IT company and we know what we're doing. Anyway, what does that have to do with Assassin's Creed 3? Nothing. I've gone off on tangent and I apologize. Now, wifey's got a foot fetish. What the fuck are you talking about? What? She does not? No, she doesn't. I mean, I don't. I mean, she hasn't, so from what I've seen, what are you talking about, vendors? Plenty of times you want to screen a customer's face, just smile. Yes, dude, that's that, that's tough. But here's the thing. I, I've watched, like, Board Panda, and, like, there's some websites who do lists of... Oh, man. It's tough when you're in basic customer service, because I worked at a dollar store, guys. Don't get me wrong. <coughs> I've worked at a dollar store. I've worked at a Sears portrait studio i've worked as a janitor in my life i've worked some shitty fucking jobs okay where it's like oh the customer's always right i'm like i'm a lowly cashier fine i will call the manager shut up the fuck up karen sheer she is she will override everything i said about policy fuck you get a dick in the ass with no lube yeah i've been there i've been there but there's also times where you know the rules, and you could be happy with bringing in your manager to Mrs. Karen. Like, fuck. Anyway, talk too much. We've, we've, we've gone away from Assassin's Creed, which is the main focus. In a different way. Hey, where's our map? In the replay, I'm gonna edit that shit out. That was too much talking for me. I'm so sorry, guys. Alright, let's go to the waterfront. Careful. The place is well guarded. We need to slip past them. Uh oh. We gotta slip past people? Why? I wanna do that. Alright, so we're gonna get in trouble, right? Not restricted area. We're just walking around, man. We're just walking around. 
Four Hill South Battery? What's this? Four Hill is the second highest hill in Boston. If only I tried harder when it was a little hillock. Overlooks Boston Harbor. A defense were built here in the mid-17th century. Along with a smaller one-gun fortification near the harbor named South Battery. South Battery was expanded in the 1740s, but it fell out of use by the 1760s. Both it and Fort Hill were built by Patriots during the Revolutionary War. Both were dismantled during the turn of the century. <coughs> Fort Hill, the hill itself, not the fortica uh, fortification, was leveled in the late 1860s to make room for one more for more land. So never realized his dream of becoming a high hill in town. That sounds familiar. It's because it happened to every hill in Boston. Hills are the natural enemies of Bostonians and will forever be. Okay. All right. All right. Got it. We're gonna get detected, but fuck it. Turkeys! <laughs> Will we get through undetected? I don't think so. Let's go, we did it. Oh shit. Locked. I'll have to find the key. Wait here. Mm -mm. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Done. No. Nope. Well, fight me? Come fight me, bro. Where you going, bro? Where are you going? See ya! <laughs> Go for a swim, bro. That's tough, man. We had him. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Would you rather get scalped by Connor the Assassin or die in battle during the revolution? I would rather. See, here's the thing. I want to. I don't want to uh, glamorize uh, scalping at all. Uh, but ultimately, getting scalped means you're alive for the most part. My understanding is that you're alive while you're pulled back and ripped. So. No, I'd rather, like, if I'm in the Revolutionary War, I'd rather just get shot dead. And if they, they can get my scalp after I'm dead. You know, like, that's, like, that's crazy. I can't, I couldn't do that. That's great. That's tough, man. Here we are, then. What do you think about, what do you mean, you Tenzin? Huh? What do you think? Why must you always make these things so difficult, Benjamin? Merely provide me with recompense, and all shall be forgiven. I'll not pay for protection I don't need. Clearly, you do require protection. Else we wouldn't be here. Ooh. How very good. Now, what shall we do about our guest? Maybe. I'll take his hands. Put an end to his surgery. Maybe. I'll take his tongue. Put an end to his waggling. Or maybe. I'll take his cock. Put an end to his fucking us. So many options. I can't possibly decide. Take all three. Ooh. No. 
Hold a moment. Perhaps I was hasty in refusing you earlier. I'm so very sorry, Benjamin. But that door has closed. Ooh. Be reasonable, Silas. I rather think I was. But you took advantage of my oh. generosity. I won't be made a fool a second time. I fear I lack the constitution to bear witness to such barbarism. Come find me when you're finished, Cutter. You'll regret this, Silas, do you hear me? I'll have your head! No. I rather think you won't. What's in his nose, bro? What? Quick little swipe and no more is. How's that sound, Mr. Church? They'll be detected? Maybe you'll get lucky and pass out. Though I dare say it's only best to ensure that happens. Hold still a minute. I got a Yeah, shut the fuck up, buddy. You're done. Rusty knife as well? Dude, no way. That's his insult to injury, plus even more painful, I think. Who? Who are you? Haytham Kenway, at your service. I... I don't understand. Well, why are you here? Walk with me, Mr. Church, and all will be explained. He thought he was dead, man. He thought he was done. Surgeon. <laughs> oh my word. Yeah, what? We didn't get full 200? Damn. Whoa! 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 Fuck you, buddy. Sure, you fuck you. Get that almanac right here. There we go. Got it. Nice. Very nice. Oh, wow, guys. We're going over three hours here. Let's see if we can touch base. Oh, they're drinking. What's going on, boys? <laughs> he got stitches. Johnson's told me what you intend. As it happens, the man who held me is the same one that you seek. His name is Silas Thatcher. Okay. That fancy lad is our slaver. Don't let his velvet tongue deceive you. A crueler and more vicious creature I've never known. What can you tell me of his operation? He hosts at least a hundred men, more than half of whom are redcoats. All this for some slaves? <laughs> Hardly. The man's a commander in the king's troop, in charge of the Southgate Fort. Okay. We need to find a way inside. Hmm, let me think on it. Let's think In the meantime, inside. I'll attend to our final recruit. John Pitkins, our man. I'll take you to him. All right. We'll do that. In the next episode, my friends, we can go for like three hours here. A lot of intro stuff. Um, it's like Assassin's Creed 3. It was on the same systems. It was on Xbox 360 and PS3. But it felt different. Like, there's more changes to... Whoa. Oh, shit. I feel like there's more to it. You know what I mean? So, that said, my friends, we're going to call it for the night. I do want to thank Tenzin for being here. Always a pleasure to see you, my brother. T uh, Benders was here tonight. Thank you, Benders, for being here. And we also had Wolf Throne hanging out with us tonight over on Twitch. Appreciate you, man. Jacob Richardson was hanging with us tonight in the stream. Thank you for being here, man. Always a pleasure. And we had a lot of people lurking here, too. And I appreciate you guys as well. <laughs> All right, guys. This is a great first episode of Assassin's Creed 3. Until next stream, my friends, have a great week. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Give someone a high five. We'll see you on the next one.